I am not registered or licensed in any jurisdiction to provide financial advice and therefore unqualified to give investment recommendations. Always do your own research and consult with a licensed investment professional. This communication should never be used as the basis for making investment decisions and is therefore entertainment and commercial advertising only. Stocks with low per share prices are speculative and carry a high degree of risk. So only invest what you can afford to lose. Only invest what you can afford to lose. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Sal Man in the building. Shout out to everybody in the chat room already. Everybody in the chat room already. I'm not even I'm not even up and going yet. Hold on here. Today, September 30th, 2016. The bounce on on uh, THLD wasn't as big as I thought it would be, but it was something. What's going on everybody? Yes indeed, James Bond, T Style, Chamaka. Barry Parker, everybody, Kenny Campbell, everybody in the chat room already. Look at that. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Let me get my shit set up over here. Got the bow jangles. Got that Miller High Life this time. I wanted to try some. I've never tried Miller High Life. I can't believe it. Never tried it. But somebody sent me an email, said try some Miller High Life next time. So I'm trying some Miller High Life. Yes, indeed. All right, all right. So Skype is up. Let me get Trading View up. Overall, I mean, we had some 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 good moves today. SDOCQ came alive. SODC SO SDOCQ came alive again. Yes, indeed. One moment here. Appreciate you guys joining me again in the chat room. People slowly coming in. Y'all know today is Friday. So, Friday shows are pretty much anything goes. Pretty much anything goes on Friday. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on the show tonight and 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 uh you know whatever you guys want to talk about stocks whatever of course we always start out that way we always start out that way and and look besides the bouncing THO, uh THLD was SDOCQ what's going on Coldwood Craig G what's good I mean it, it just came alive now look Let's let you know. Let's be honest. I mean, we had all wrote it off for dead, all right. And and I pretty much wrote it off for dead. I pretty much wrote it off for dead, okay. I pretty much wrote it off for dead. And I I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't get into it. As you guys know, I saw I tried to get into it today on Twitter, but uh, after I sent out that alert, but I couldn't get filled. It was moving too damn fast. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I got the Miller High Life this time. Miller High Life. Let me try this one this time. I'm saying they made a killing on uh, Warm. They made a killing on Warm. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. What's going on, Master82, Bovash? Yeah, so James, I mean, whenever you want to, you know, call in and talk about SDOCQ, because I'd like to know what happened today. I, 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 I got the news from Bill Betts. Bill Betts hit me up saying that SDOCQ was going to uh, come out and start running again. Now, obviously, they're going to be using a new ticker. I don't think they're using the same ticker, bro. 
I don't think they're using the same ticker because if they were going to use the same ticker, that 111, 112% would have stayed. In fact, it would have probably tripled. Okay? There's, there's, there, it just can't be a 41% gain to end the day and tell me that they're going to run on Monday with the same ticker. I, I just, I, I can't fathom that. All right? I can't fathom that. Because all those people who got in today would, would stay in. They would stay in. You know, they would stay in. Uh, yeah, Norris Global. Somebody talked about N NGBL. That was on our, our, our list last night. And NGBL continued to rack up buys. NGBL continued to rack up buys. Uh, I continued... Pushing uh, VTSI today on Twitter. I continue pushing VTSI, and I'm going to keep pushing that. On every social media platform I'm on, VTSI, I'm taking it all the way to 50. Taking it all the way to 50, all right? Uh, also made a couple things about Atlas. I told you guys, Atlas Energy Group. Let's go. Let's take it all the way to three. Let's take it all the way to three. In fact, I think the last picture I put up, was about Atlas. Take it all the way to three. Want to make money on that? VTSI and, and some others. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Had to had to stack up on some some of these low floats out here. A lot of little penny low floats out here, man. And when we talk about low float for a penny. It's, it's different than, than maybe a NASDAQ or an Amex. All right. So for a low float for a penny, you know, it, it could be in the low hundred millions. You know what I'm saying? Just because the stocks are so cheap, you, you're already buying so much at a time anyway. So you can't really compare a low float at, at you know, 77 cents for a low float that's at, you know, double zero twenty. You know what I'm saying? I learned a little bit about that today. You know, look at NGBL. NGBL is a perfect example of that. NGBL is a perfect example of that. Up 20% today. 20%. Up 20%. All right. It looks like the, the good times keep rolling for NGBL. How long they'll keep going? I don't know. I don't know, but keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. Sinclair was good. Eric Miller was good. Okay. Yeah, AUPH was, was strong today, man. AUPH was strong today. AUPH was very strong. Got up into the high 360s. Well, actually, the high was 370s. The high was 370. It was a good short. AUPH was a good short today. I think they overplayed the news a little bit. I mean, don't get it twisted. The news was good, but when we started getting up into the 370s, or I, I saw it last when it was 360s, I thought it was a little bit too, you know, come on now. I, you know, don't get me, you know, twisted. I'm impressed, but, you know, a dollar, dollar ten on the game, that's, that's a little bit too much. You know, a little bit too much. Bond, what's good with you, man? What's good, what's good? How you doing, man? Man, good, good, good to hear from man. you. See a little money. Get, get your money voice up a little corners. bit. There. Is that is that my phone or, you, or yours? It seems like it's real low. Um, hang on. Okay, I think this is better. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I was saying, man, money comes from all corners, man. That's what I'm seeing right now. I mean, that's money it. comes from everywhere, man. I'm blessed. But uh, before we go into SDOCQ, I mean, I, like I said, I remember that stock that CBM. I just, Told you guys about a few days ago. Uh, we'll say that ticker again. Uh, CDM, CDM. Yes, yeah, CD, CDM. Uh, right? C, no, no, CBM. It, it dropped like ninety percent. CBM. One day because it, because they had was placed on a what you call a clinical hold. Okay. CDM. So man, it's oh, man is rallying, man. I mean, I got in like twenty four cents a few days ago, mm. and I told I told people from the beginning. 
whenever you see like a, uh, a pharmaceutical stock that the clinical hold, unless it's, unless it has any, unless it's nothing to do with patient safety, then it's more of a, more of a process issue. Right. So they got to fix some, something in the process. So I told folks, for folks who were, you know, they were scared, you know, they were, oh, man, you know, I'm losing, I lost all my money, and I thought, dude, I said, if it's a if clinical hold due to a process issue, it's going to rebound, and sure enough, it's going to rebound, and man, it's yeah. gone up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, some nice change in that today. But anyway, again on SDOCQ, I've heard some rumors. Like I said, I'm not going to say because I, I learned not to, you know, I'm not. Gonna, I'm just going to say what I heard. Okay. That as far as there's some sort of some 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 sort of appeal, it's in the works. Some kind of, uh, uh, I think you're trying to go ahead and appeal the judge's decision in regards to, in regards to casting out the equity. Okay. And um, I think that's probably what happens. What that has a lot to do with what's happening. What happened today? The stock popped up like 47 percent today. Um, and like I said, with bankruptcy stocks, like I said, you know, judge says one thing, like I said, you know, the, the people, you can always appeal it. It's okay. not, you know, it's not, you know, not set in stone. And once the appeal is placed, then they're going to have to, they're going to, they're going to, more than likely going to have to, as far as stop the process. Right. You know, as far as the, the as far as the, uh, the POR kind of reorganization. So like I said, this is, I, I think uh, it's, it's speculative, but I think there might be a possibility that they might be doing an appeal in this situation here. Okay. And if that happens, man, man, you imagine that, man. I had to appeal on this deal, and the joke is going to like about a dollar or something, you know. I hope. I mean, it, it could do what, uh, uh, you know, Atlas just did. So I, I, don't, I don't know. Exactly. We'll see. We'll see, man. And, uh, and the thing about it, the, we'll see, here's the funny thing about it, it says that if it, do, if, if, a, if it comes out and a, a news come out about appeal, man, this stock is going to go crazy, man. STOC will go nuts. Because what happened, everybody who counted it out and said, you know, this is garbage, you know, lost my money, whatever. You sort of realize that, you know, this thing got legs. Oh, man, it's going to, I mean, and plus, I people know about it now. By now, it's got, everybody knows about it. It's on the wire, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, you know, you guys got to look at those, those um, some people think I'm crazy for buying the stocks. I dropped down 60, 70, 80%. I mean, I'm, I got my plans. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. And like I said before, as long as it's not to do with anything financial, if it's something due due to what is it, I don't care. It, it, sometimes you start saying like litigation. There's you know, some ex ex ex, ex um, law office opens a lawsuit against the company, whatever. I mean, like I said, you, a lot of stocks had that on there, you know. Right. And because some because you have some disgruntled shareholders who had bought at the top and basically lost a lot of percentage or whatever the case, and so they you know initiate the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean they win the lawsuit. It doesn't mean that they, they initiate the lawsuit. So I like to get those two, those that the people think that, you know, um, are heading down. But the bottom line is, like, you know, with all of investing, you got to buy at the bottom. You got to buy at the bottom. And like I said, you know, if, if you're not willing to risk anything, you know, we'll, we'll never make anything. That's the bottom line with investing. There you got to be able to risk stuff. But like I said, I mean, I, I, knew, I knew that CDM and I knew that, that AR, uh, was it ATRS? That one that's down to tape, I'm telling you, man, folks better take they better recognize that joke is gonna go crazy, man. Mm. Because they getting ready to do that um the NDA thing situation, new drug application. Okay. It's gonna go nuts. And right now it's like things like dollar seventy five. But I think like I said, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, this is speculation. Like I said, nowadays I see everything I see now is speculation. Mm -hmm. that, man, if that ND comes out, whatever the case is, and anything is positive, that thing's this stock this this um stock you're looking at right now. ATRS, I think we're looking at a thirty-five dollar stock. You know, once once wow. that, that, that thirty-five dollars on ATRS. Once once that, once that, once that um, EpiPen comes out, that generic one comes out. Oh my God, because now now people have options. You know, that's the whole thing about it. You know, they no longer have to be paying seven hundred dollars for a vowel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. of, um, of, um, I call it, uh, for the EpiPen. And folks, I look at folks, I look at like you can look at it. As forensics, you know what I'm saying? When you pick a stock, you look at the forensic. That's sure. part of doing due diligence, you know? You got to put piece and piece together. Well, we know that right now, they say, you know, uh, EpiPen is so expensive, people can't hardly afford it. Yeah, they're so, and then company comes out with an option. Mm -hmm. It's a generic option. I mean, they're going to go for that because it's much cheaper. So that that, that in itself, and then when you look at the, the, such a large pipeline, mm -hmm. I mean, this company has like six drugs already out in the market. And it's not a, it's not a company that you know basically trying to get something out there. They have like six drugs already out, you know, as far as at the pharmacy, and you got like another another uh, five drugs that, that that are currently in NDA right now. Uh -huh.
and that's unusual because normally you see a uh, you see a drug a, a biotech is will have like one stock. I mean, sorry, one um, clinical um, one you know drug as far as that's in phase two or phase three. This one has like about five or six of them in, in um, NDA new drug application because new drug application comes just before marketing. Mm-hmm. So people got to be aware of that, man. You know, you're looking at right now it's about seventy five, but it won't be that way for much longer. Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm just doing the math here. I see the stock is up what thirty nine point eight percent over the last month or so. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not bad for ATRS. I mean, and it's, it's, it's and, very and it popped. It popped. It popped yesterday too. I think it was yesterday. I think it popped yesterday to like eighty something cent, a dollar eighty something, whatever it was, and they dropped back down. Mm-hmm. But right now, I mean, I think folks. I mean, I think it's accumulation time right, okay. right now, honestly. So, so you're saying, um, you know, the two stocks you just talked about, ATRS. You think you still like that going long? Oh, I love uh, it. I love it. SDOCQ, you you you're still you're kind of iffy on it. I mean, now, so, so are you saying SDOCQ? Like I said, you know, I mean, honestly, I mean, I saw my position. You know, honestly, uh, yeah, I got to the bad case after what happened. Mm-hmm. So I saw my position, but now, now, now I'm now really considering now because of, like if this if this is all true about as far as the uh, appeal, mm-hmm. man, it's going it's going to be a monster, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be a monster because everybody's going to be like, oh damn, this thing went, this thing, went, you know. We lost our money, but now, man, this joker is going to go, you know, go to a dollar because it's just just a mere fact that, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like a comeback kid, you know what I'm saying? Right. If he's going to be like, oh, this thing like crazy. There's one more stock I got to mention before. You guys got to keep your eye on that STM, man. I'm telling you, that STM. Hmm. I mentioned I mentioned about um, the, the Internet of Things because I'm not sure if you heard the term Internet of Things. Yeah, I, I've been hearing, I've been hearing the Internet of Things, you know, popping up a little bit more. I have yet to have anybody really kind of explain that exactly. Well, what, what happened? Mean, but... What ha- What happened? Internet of Things is basically the, it's, it's, it's basically Internet, you know, Internet two, like the, what we call Internet, you know, the web, the World Wide Web. Mm-hmm. The Internet of Things is basically what happened. It combines everything to one under one net. Okay. Refrigerator, your car, your home security, your your, your cell phone is now online under one net. and integrated. Everything. Okay. Right. Exactly. So what happened? That company, the STM, are the ones they're making what you call the MIMS. MIMS is what you call is it's um it's basically what's called sensors, which is called um, nano sensors. They're like really really tiny sensors. Okay. And all of us have MIMS. We all of us uh, our own products have MIMS in it already. You have the cell phone has MIMS. When you play that game with you know when you play the, the motion game on your cell phone, that has MIMS sensors in it. So this company, STM, basically they mix, they make the, um, they're one of the primary um, producers of MIM sensors. So what happens is that one thing I've learned is that if you're not if you're not Apple, you want to be the supplier of Apple. That's so that's what I tell people all the time. You know, you can't afford the Apple shares. You buy the best thing. You buy what you buy the supplier. Mm-hmm. You buy you, you buy you know the supply because it's gonna be a lot more cheaper. So now is Apple it. getting anything from SDM right now under contract right now, or is it? Or it, I'm not it, sure. I, I'm not sure about what happening. I, I think IBM is just uh, IBM. I think Hewlett Packard. I think um, there's a bunch of companies actually um, that are, are collaborating with with uh, MIMS technology and stuff like that. Okay. And matter of fact, MIMS so is very big. So they're basically in the proximity of the business. Okay. Okay. And what happened? Put they were projecting that MIMS in the next four years will be a trillion dollar industry. You know, a trillion dollars in four years, man, that's crazy because, you know, if you look at Amazon, if you were to buy Amazon 15 years ago, whatever the case is, or whatever, whenever it was, you know, you saw what happened people who bought early on. Same thing with Berkshire Hathaway. People back, back in 83 was thinking like $3,000 a share or whatever it was. Right. And if you bought then and you have it now, I mean, just, you know, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just do the math. But like I said, STM, you got you to look at the STM right now at $8,011 a share. I know it's kind of expensive. But if you have the money, you just drop something in it, like I said, hold it, for, hold it for a few years, whatever the case is, you know, you wake, you wake up a rich person. And I know, I know right now we all are in the situation where we want to make this money right quick. Sure. But you gotta, you gotta have your long term too. You gotta have a huge stock that's very long term. You know, because you have to have some balance, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, that's about it. But yeah, you keep your eye on that STM, you guys, and the other one, the, the, the um, APRS, CBM, I, it's funny, even what's in, what's the call data? Even an NSDX went up to went up today, like about nine percent, nine percent. Right. So I a lot of things popping off right now. And, you know, it it was. I mean, I I would love to see, you know, SDOCQ did do what it did in August, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. 
Maybe this <laughs> not be the you know, maybe this won't be the last song we'll hear from SDLCQ. Well, like I said before, you know, anything can happen. Like I said, if that if that appeal is approved, man, I'm telling you, man. And like I said before, you know, I've always felt strongly about it. I always had, you know, I always felt that it was going to work out because, like I said, they had no, you know, the, the way they treated the shareholders is, is criminal, basically. The, the way the judge went down with that with that decision, mm -hmm. criminal. There's no reason why this, this, the uh, shareholders should have been, you know, wiped out of uh, post to wipe them out because of the fact that basically. The whole way, the, the whole situation with um, STOCQ, you know, the company had some flaws in the factory, or the case is, like they, they weren't able to process um, process the zinc. Mm -hmm. That had nothing to do with shareholders. It had, it had to do with operational issues. Right. But I, th I think what it was, I think the bond holders and the creditors tried to pull a fast one and try to get everything for themselves. But anyway, that's about it, man. Appreciate it, you man. Know? Thanks for the call, James. <laughs> Take care, man. Bye bye. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I mean, uh, he has somewhat redeemed himself today uh, on SDOCQ. Obviously, most people are, are no longer in the stock, but, you know, J James hung on. James hung on, and, and shout out to James for the win there. Uh, you know, I, I honestly don't even remember what I had sold or even bought in at. I don't even know whether or not uh, I would have made any money. I can't even remember. I'd have to go back into the my history. But, uh, Mr. Lloyd, you're on the air. Man, you, you know, that, that concerns me about talking about SDOCQ. And I, I'm going to give my opinion as, as, as a devil's advocate, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not mad, and I respect James' opinion, but I'm going to tell you something. I listened to three days of this trial. The judge did not give a fuck about the shareholders. So you guys are thinking about getting in that shit? You're taking a serious chance. Like I told you guys before. If you're not an attorney, if you don't have any law of bankruptcy stocks or any education, do not get into it. Because you know what? One day you put your six, seven hundred bucks in there, you at work, and now it's down. Mm. You have to con you have to be able to know the laws. And if you don't know the laws, you're really taking a real chance. And it sounds all good, you know. It sounds great that it might go up to a dollar. But you have a real high chance of losing it all. And you know what? I listened to three days of that bullshit. Three full days of that bullshit. And he didn't give a damn about the shareholders. He didn't give a damn about the SEC investigation. None of that shit fucking matter. So if you don't have a law degree, you can't convince me to buy SDOCQ. Mm. That's, that, that's, I'm, I'm sorry I'm so emotional about it, but you know, you got to quit pumping this shit up because it is not as good as you make it seem. I don't give a damn. You know, I mean, I, you know, when you take a loss like that, man, you know, you, it, it, this shit is done. This shit is done. It just happened to go up two cents. If people made two or three hundred bucks, great. But don't don't have these high hopes that you're going to make thousands and billions of dollars in this because it, it ain't the case. Because once you lose your money... If people get mad at you, they just take the profits. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I had dreams that I was on have some fucking hardwood floors when I got home. Car was going to be paid off. You know what I'm saying? And I went home to the top room. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Yes, indeed. I want you guys to know up there and just uh, realize there is a huge risk. And if you barely get into stocks, stay away from the bankruptcy stocks. Get into some other shit. Right. Do, do not waste your time getting into it unless you have a a law degree in, in, in distressed properties. Your uncle, your mother, your family member is a, is a lawyer in distressed properties. Or you have a, 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 a clear master's, a PhD in understanding the economics of distressed property. Other than that, go play with, you know, PTX and the other stocks that we were talking about. But don't waste your time with bankrupt stocks. So I, and I thought we was done with that, man. You know, every time we talk about a bankrupt stock, it just gets me going. No, no. I mean, no. Mr. Lloyd, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm, uh, you know, look. I said James does his thing. He knows how to pick winners for him. But I've said this a couple times. When it comes to bankrupt stocks, I'm done with them. When they, when they hit, great. I'll jump in. Uh, ATLS coming out of bankruptcy. All right, I'll jump on that. I will push that. But anything else? Right. Right. I'm not hoping, I'm not dreaming, I'm not working, right. waiting for no court date, no, fuck it. 
<laughs> Aeropostale. Right, but you, know, you know, Aeropostale. Right. We were waiting for the right. 12th. They rescheduled. They said the 21st. They rescheduled. Fuck it. I'm done. Right. When it happens, it happens. Right. If it doesn't, fuck it. Right. I'm out. You right. Know? Now, if the appeal goes through and you happen to catch it as when the, the news comes out, great. But don't sit there and put your money in beforehand and, 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 and don't, because the likelihood you're going to lose your money is pretty high. And after me listening to, to the hearing for three days, the, the shareholders, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter that their assets were greater than their than their debt. That shit didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Basically, everybody got fucked around, and and I don't know what the appeal process is going to do, but the likelihood that the judge's decision is still going to stand, and and everybody has these hopes that it's going to go through, yeah. is going to lose a lot of money. So. You're going to have to do your study, man. Just continue studying and, 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 and looking at trend analysis and fundamentals, man. But when you're messing with these bankrupt stocks, you might, you might as well just put your money down the toilet or just mail it to me, and I'll, I'll take care of it for you. Yes, indeed. There you go. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right. That's Mr. Lloyd for you. Mr. Lloyd for you. That's Mr. Lloyd for you. We just had to give you his two cents. That's all. And Mr. Lloyd, I'm 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 up in INNV. I told people on the show yesterday INNV at 25 was a buy. We up a little, we up three cents now on INNV. I didn't buy it exactly at 25. I might, I don't know, like at 25, 28 or some bull crap like that. But we up. INNV. I'm I'm just gonna be patient. I'm just gonna be patient. I know half of y'all think I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, another stock in here that again i'm not gonna gloat on but you guys heard it here first nvfy nova furniture okay you go back into some of the show records i was talking about nova furniture you know at that 89 cent i said this would be a good swing this would be a good swing people say oh well the volume is kind of light uh blah, 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 blah. all right NVFY, go see what it did today. I closed my position. Treasure Hunter, you're on the air, man. Shit, what's happening with you, Sal? I know it's been a little minute, brother. Yes, indeed. <laughs> what's been good with you, man? Yeah, it's been a couple days since you've been on the show. Well, damn, let me see. Man, I don't, man, I don't, know, I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start. Um, let me see. I bought a little candy paint for truck and everything, right? Yes, and then, uh, you know, I'm sitting back spending some cash on the winnings I made. And then I did not, I did not want to jump back into it. Mm. And again, this opportunity was too good to be true, so I had to do it. Um, I'm not caught the show Monday or Tuesday, right? Yes. Um, I know you guys do all this. It's, you know, fancy indicators and all this complicated shit, all this and that. But sometimes, it, it, you know, it's coming kind of sense by the smart and stuff. Um, I called Monday and Tuesday about your, uh, uh, what was it, Sky People uh, Fruit Juice? Yeah, Sky People Fruit Juice. You remember? Juice. Yeah. Yep, yep. Now, you was right. It did go to, uh, no, no, uh, not fours, but it dropped to uh, six something. Mm -hmm. And when I went really down to six something, I watched that thing like a hawk. I was hungry and thirsty, right? So I had my plate ready, ready for that good old shit, right? right. And now suddenly it dropped down to six something, rock it back, uh, this Wednesday, uh, uh, rock it back up to, I think, $10 and something. Yeah. Right before it did, yeah, I, I, I locked my bets in on both, both counts as low, because I, you know, I went crazy spending yeah. on uh, E-Trade and Robin Hood, and both went up, boom, 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 boom. I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Then again, I love from your show. You Hello? I found it out, nobody... Yeah. Okay, yeah, you, you went out for just like a, a couple seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, when somebody's down and out, you definitely got to, um, you know what I'm saying, like, like uh, 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 the bounce back, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because it's like sometimes I look into stocks, and you be like, oh, what do you see in it? And then I, you see stocks, I'm like, what do you see in it? But I've seen that bounce back, though. You've seen that one, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. Now, uh, a couple of more plays. A couple of more plays I got to tell you about. Um, you know, I see the top of your show: fried chicken and uh, beer. Yes, indeed. It should be fried, fried chicken and beer, man. That's what we doing. Yeah. Yeah, baby. It should be fried chicken, uh, beer, and blunt. Mm. My marijuana place is doing good too, homeboy. Now my long term place: S T R W F A. A C B F F, and then again T H C B F mm -hmm. took off today. 
Yep. I know. No, uh, I, yeah, you've been playing those those weed plays. Uh, yeah. What was that first ticker again? Uh, let me see. Hold on. I got one of these damn big trucks going on. Uh, let me see. Let me see. The first one, S T R W F. S T R S P R. Okay, so you're playing. Okay, you're still playing. Uh, uh, Supreme yeah. Pharmaceuticals. Okay. I thought you had yes, given sir. up on that. Okay, all right. Oh no, 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 no. See, see, when when they, when they rock it up, you got to get the bounce back off, though. Okay. You know, because you know, saying they always go down. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the chart looks very. I mean, yeah, it found some support and it's bouncing off that. Uh, yeah, and people, you know, closing out some gains and looks like it found support, so it's going back to retest uh, where it left off. So nice, nice, nice play on that. Mm-hmm. Now another one, uh, a long-term play, bro. That I, uh, you know, I, I didn't mention, but I noticed uh, yesterday's show somebody yeah uh, L, uh, else did mention it. Okay. That uh, how can I say I, when I dig up my, uh, you know, an old treasure hunt and I, I dig up my shovel, I think a week and a half ago, okay. it was uh, I think uh, let me see the ticker was uh, XXII, and I got it locked in. I think a dollar ten. And yeah. I went back in and got like the dollar fifteen. Yeah, XXII is a stock that somebody had talked about on the show a couple of days ago. Can't remember, but yeah, that that that's been a nice little runner too. Yeah, I think like, it was yesterday. Or so, and I was like, my jaw almost dropped because I was like, I sunk so much money into it, you know, like a week and a half ago. Somebody else mentioned it, and I'm like, yo, man, I got to find out what's going on with this because no matter what happens, bro, end of the day, it still make gains, you know. I so I got him and both of my accounts. Also. I don't know the trade, you know, yes, and uh, he been doing, uh, yeah, he been doing awesome as well. So I'm like, oh, so what's going on with that? I mean, the games, but you know, I was afraid to cash out. You know, I might rock it now, but you know, keep gaining. So I was like, man, let me hit saddle up and see what's going on with this shit. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, honestly, I don't know anything about XXII. Uh, I don't even know what what they do or anything like that. Twenty twenty second century. I, for for a second, I thought it was that. Uh, the real estate brokerage company, but uh, this doesn't have anything. This is a, a biotech play, and I, I have no idea what they do. Twenty uh, second century, and then they do something with nicotine, and so I, I, I don't, I have no idea what they do. But hey, if it's making you money, and the chart does look nice, man, it's been, it looks like a decent <laughs> swing. I mean, you're up almost a dollar, yeah. almost up, actually up almost fifty cents a share in uh, what twenty days. So you know, good numbers, man, good numbers. Yeah, and here it is. I was gonna take a little break, and uh, the damn sky people just got me brought back in. I was man, I had to jump. I had to do it, bro. I had to do it. But uh, you know, that was awesome. It was scary too because you know when I was looking at it, bro, and like you said, it kept going, it kept going down, and going down. And I remember you said it's gonna go to fours. I'm like, oh fuck, here we go. It's gonna get real nasty. Right. And it just touched it six something for like a millisecond, and started to do that little coming up i'm like oh fuck the yeah. bounce up damn thank god for south show i gotta give my homeboy props on that one man you know and then again like i said if for the new beginners south do know what the hell he's talking about just watch yeah. his show you know he ain't gonna teach you like how to do this shit but you watch his show enough he'll tell you how to do it and what to look for and then and a lot of these uh stocks they do the same thing and believe it or not, I mean, you you also can say, like, you know, do what we do, man. It just it's easy once you do it enough time and get the hang of it and watch his shows, you know. Because yeah. I think I was locked in uh, when you started recording. Actually, I saw video 15, but I think it was video number one, man. I was like, shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, if it was for the show, man, I wouldn't have been this good, though. But definitely keep up the good work, man. And like I said, man, my hat's off to you, cuz. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. Thank you for, uh, so much for the call, bro. Hey man, anytime. But yeah, man, check them tickets out. And like I said, they they fall down, but they definitely up. And uh, like I said, I'm writing them up right now, so I don't know how long they're gonna you know stay up. But you know, that's what I've been up to, man. <laughs> Thank you for the call, bro. You got it, cousin. All right. So shout out to Treasure Hunter for the call, man. And Treasure Hunter, man, he does his thing. I mean, you know, it's very impractical the way he does it. But you know, he doesn't trust any indicators. He just goes and finds those just dirty OTC picks that make money or he finds these really expensive you know uh large cap stocks that move you know two or three four dollars in a day uh that that wouldn't really make sense to you or not you know but you know makes sense for him so it is what it is it is what it is james uh bond i know you wanted to call back in call back in james if you want to uh 
respond to Mr. Lloyd. I'll be more than happy to give you the opportunity. All right. Uh, yeah, SGBY ran again today after a couple, you know, after maybe a couple of days cooling down. You know, nice little 2% gain there on SGBY. All right, nice little 2% there on, on SGBY. All right. Yes, indeed. All right. So what's up, James? All right, so you wanted hey. to uh, respond. This, this, this is the Carter two man. <laughs> now, what I was saying, man, you know, as far as what Lloyd said, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm not calling to you as far as getting into the massive debate. Mm -hmm. But like I said before, I told, I said before, um, he was, you know, don't go all in. You know, he's talking about making like big moves, like four grand or three grand. I, here's the thing, like I said before. The bottom line, like I said, is that you can't go to one bankruptcy and think you know everything about bankruptcies. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you had a bad experience, and that's that's part of that's part of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. You know, for you to say that you know all bankruptcy stocks are trash. I mean, like I said, I've made money in there. That's how I, that's how I, I got to where I am. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for you to say that all bankruptcy stocks you lose your money and all that stuff. The bottom line, like I said, is that if you if you buy a stock and it's up 150 percent, I mean, the reasonable thing to do is to sell to sell a, a, a majority of it and and, and keep, keep some profits. And then you, whatever you have left over, just, you know, let it play out. But the bottom line for you to, to be calling and saying that, oh, you know, bankruptcy st stocks are junk and this and that. And this, I mean, Lloyd hasn't even been investing that long. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it, I mean, you're taking advice from why he, he really don't know what investing is all about. You know, I've been, down, I've been doing this for 15 years. But like I said before, you know, what works for some don't work for others. But it, it's all about discipline. You know, it's all about, like I said, you know, if your stock is up, take your money. I mean, how many times we got to, we got to reiterate that? You know, if you, if you buy a stock at forty percent, fifty percent, take your money. You know, what I'm saying that way, that way you remove the risk. You know, what I'm saying. I mean, you know, this common sense. You know, but like I said before, you I mean, talking about SDSQ, Like I said, I said a minute ago. You know, this is my, this is this is what I believe. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I, I don't have some magic, you know, some, some magic. Um, I call it, um, I call it a, a, a ball or whatever. I like see the future. Mm -hmm. But like I said, as far as my as far as my history, where I come from, I've made a lot of money on bankruptcy stocks. I mentioned okay. I mentioned to you before about the GDP. So let me yeah, let me interrupt I, you real quick. Demario Ware uh -huh. in the chat room mm -hmm. is saying that there's a message board. And Demario, if you got a link to that, let us know. There's a message board saying no one will lose their shares, and that SDLCQ is coming out of bankruptcy. So okay, I. I Shout out to Bill Betts. Bill Betts had sent me a, a thing that was up here on Bloomberg where mm -hmm. SDOCQ had came out and said they're going to start running again on Monday. But it's in my opinion that I believe that that ticker is going to be a new ticker. It's not going to be what we're seeing on OTC markets. It's, it's a completely new ticker. But, but that they all they got to do is all they got to do is it's, all they got to do is drop the queue. That's it. And like, that's what that's what they usually do. Most companies want to come out of bankruptcy and keep the shareholders. If, if it comes out of bankruptcy, it's it's, it's trading at SDOC, SDOC. We know the we know we know this the uh, body called the equity of safe. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, what I'm trying to get at, is that SD, I watched SDOCQ for a while, for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I've seen several times this uh, it was up 150 percent one time, 100 percent next time, 80 percent next time. I mean, when do people when does it click for people? You know what I'm saying a stock mm -hmm. is up 150 percent, take profits. I mean, what's so hot about that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and like I said, I, like I said to you before, when I spoke to you about a week ago, I said the problem, you got some cats here who have the day, who have the day traders mentality, but they trade in the long term. I mean, you can't be a day trader and trade in the long term. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, when you day trade, if you're going to day trade, stick to day trading. If you're going to do a long term, stick to long term. But for you to have a day, a day trader mentality, you think about getting in and getting out. Then most day traders go in and get out. You know, they put a, a nice, um, a nice uh, sum of money down or something, and they wait for like they wait for a small percentage increase, and then they'll they make a good, you know, good profit in in in, in return. But the bottom line is, if you if you are uh, if you are a day trader, or uh, that have day trader mentality, and you buy a stock, you know, what I'm saying try and trade it long term. They don't know, they don't want to sell. Don't take profits. Then don't get. You can't be mad at anybody. Mm -hmm. Who you gonna be mad at? You know. 
But as far as, like I said before, I mentioned to you guys about the GGP. You guys need to sit down and one day and go on the internet and look up GGP, the whole process. And, and the same thing that said back then. Uh, you know, shells going to lose their money. It's going to be wiped out. Yeah. And that's not what happened. You know, the stock, the stock, um, the stock was banked at 60 cents. And the next thing you know, like six, seven, eight months later, it came out. It was like 8000 and it jumped up to 28000 and And now it's like, like $37 a share. You know, and, 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 the, and the equity was safe. Same thing happened American Airlines. You know, there's, there's, there's quite a few um, examples I can give here. But like I said, the bottom line, like I said, is that you, you don't want to, if you, basically, if you buy, uh, if you buy a bank of stocks, it's, put a couple hundred bucks on it. Don't put thousands of dollars on it. And, 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 and when the stock goes to 150%, you don't sell. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call, James. All right. All right. Later. Yeah, there it is, guys. You know, I, I didn't want him to keep, you know, beating it over the head. But, you know, look, that's, that's his opinion on it. And that's the type of stocks he likes to play. So, but I think I think um, you know, Mr. Lloyd is 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 right to letting you guys know that you know these are these are even more risky than the OTC plays that get out here. You know what I mean? They're they're even more risky than those. All right. So we've got to be well aware of that. Got to be well aware of that. I like what Connor talked about how uh, you know he just plays the you know gainers of the day whether they be losers or winners, and he just sits with that, you know, no hoping or guessing. T.R. Kobe, is this is this you on the phone? Yes, sir, sir. Uh, my name is Tom. Tom, what's going on with you, bro? Oh, man, dude, uh, thank you so much for taking my call, and I wanted to let you know I really appreciate your chat and your show and you taking the time out of your day. Man, you got a big heart to be doing all this for us, man. Oh, I, I just love talking about penny stocks, so it's good to know that there are people out there who feel the same way. So uh, I'm all with it if you're with it. Yeah, I mean, anybody does this. I mean, it, it takes so much research, so much time and energy to, uh, to to put into this to make any money. And to think then you're putting on top of that all this video and work and, and all this. We we'll appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. So uh, I want to thank you for mentioning uh, on your chat room uh, the you trade stocks, uh, dot com. You, yeah. uh, you stock trade dot com. Yeah. Um, now this, the beginning of this week, um, I mean, I've been only using fidelity for about a year and I've been killed by the pattern day trader rule. Uh, I'm just a middle-class working guy and, uh, I don't make a lot of money, but I mean, I never borrow money to trade, but I've been saving up and kind of putting money into my brokerage account and trying to, trying to make good trades and uh the pair day trader rule always kills me and then when i pick a stock to go long i seem to get killed too mm -hmm. so i had a breakthrough this week all right and uh it took some discipline at the beginning of this week um this morning i mean i think uh, i think you saw me chatting about it in your room on monday uh i was gonna buy airy right yes and, uh, a r y and then we we, we told you <laughs> don't do that now i think the stock's actually been doing pretty it did good today but i mean for the last two three days it, it you know it had been pretty ugly and bearish no 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 I, at the beginning of the week like when it when it shot up um uh, like uh i think it went up like uh 50 or something yeah, yeah and like i think it was monday or tuesday in the morning and uh i decided okay i already told myself that i was going to take my money my funds out and put them in this uh do stocktrade.com account. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I don't care if this is, is spiking right now. I'm just going to paper trade it and see what would happen if I threw my money on it, right? Okay. So I fought, traded my funds over, and then, like I said, I gained like 1500 on that trade right there with paper money. So I'm fake money. <laughs> so moving my funds over hurt a little bit, but uh, but I did the right thing because um, then uh, later on, a couple days later, that Kosi went bankrupt. And that's the first move I made on new stock trade was at the end of the day, mm -hmm. five minutes to the close. I decided I look. I was just watching everything on my watch list, and it just seemed like the best bet to throw something on that. Um, I mean, I've seen it happen before, where even garbage stocks are just the way it is right now. It seems right. like people are throwing money at garbage. Yeah, you know. So I, I took the chance, and I, I just gained. You know, like in the morning, I, sh I sold pretty quick. I made like, you know, $200. Yeah, I mean, that's the and, way to uh, do it. I, I remember you posting about that, and I was just like, oh. But, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of biased just because I had actually went to a location and tasted how horrible their food was. So, it, it And I've never had of, it. Yeah, it just kind of avoided me that even thinking about touching uh, their stock. But, right. I mean, congrats on that win, though. 
Yeah, thanks. And um, then the next day, um, I said, you know what? I was the thing is, I was watching the after hours pattern. Uh, the, uh, now I just use Yahoo Finance on my mobile app, and I'm just looking at percentages. I'm not looking at a chart after hours, okay. but I watch it constantly. And uh, the, the Kosi I saw I go up all the way to like 33 after hours. Okay, and then the next day I saw I go up to mm, like 20, barely 20, 22. So today it's up 10. So uh, now it's a bad idea to get into Kosi. I think it's too late to hit that bounce. Yeah. So, but I hit it again the next day, and I made another about about three hundred bucks. Uh, that was this morning, and um, as soon as I get rid of it, I saw R U P H or A U P H, A U P H, I think it is yep. uh, Arena Pharmaceuticals. Yes, indeed. I saw it. I saw it. You know, running real hard, and I threw everything I had on that, and uh, and then uh, I gained. I just held tight and held steady, and I, I spotted like I don't know, it was like perfect, like genius, man. I just I just dropped it exactly at the at the top, um, and on that one I made like six hundred and fifty bucks, like in a span of fifteen minutes. Mm. And so I was like, hey, you know what? Do stock trade. This is working out. Let me see. Maybe there's something else that's working uh, for the rest of the day, and. Perfect timing. The uh, the new NX uh, TX, uh, the new IPO, popped onto the market like 15 minutes, just barely opened, and it was spiking like crazy, like already 88, 82 percent. And I went with that, and then I rode that all the way to uh, like a nine hundred dollar gain. So my total gain today for this all this afternoon was like a thousand seven hundred. From a five thousand dollar start. There we go. There we go, ladies so, and gentlemen. But I mean, I'm telling you, Sal, from all the bullshit that I had to go with, through with Fidelity and struggling with pattern day trader rule and trying to get my groove, dude, I'm, I'm all, I was down, I'm down for the year like five thousand. So that's just like taking a bite yeah. back to where I need to be. Yeah, and and, and and look, you know, going from you know what is it nine ninety nine over there, something like that. Uh, yeah, seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine to like a dollar in and out. You know, the the only thing about you stock trade and the people who have I've stayed in contact with that use it is that sometimes it it almost urges you to over trade. And I think sometimes just if you can control yourself, you know, you mm -hmm. can do you'll do just fine. But it does you know kind of get yeah, into it, you and cause you to you have to have a lot of self control. Yeah, yeah. Self control, man. It's mm -hmm. self control. And 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 <laughs> my story's not done yet. I kind of screwed up and and. Uh, I feel like, you know, like later on in the day, okay, I'm like, maybe there's something I could grab at the end of the day like I've been doing with Cozy. And, you know, I was looking at um, that same stock, the NXTX, the, the IPO. I think, it, you know, I don't know if I'm saying the ticker right. Maybe somebody in the chat room can type it out. Um, but um, I grabbed that when it was spiking like crazy, like an hour before the close. And that was a bad pl a bad idea, man. I grabbed it at, like, the top, and then I lost, like, 350 bucks. But... Uh, I, I cut it out real quick when I saw it was losing. So, at the end of the day, I made about a thousand four hundred. So I'm through a thousand three fifty. So I'm still doing good. But I mean, I'm kind of like I feel like I, I felt like damn. I feel like I still lose. I still lost because I went ahead and, and did the same mistake that I should have been learning to not do already. You know what I mean? Hey, Tom, are you there? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm listening uh, to you, man. I'm listening to you. Yeah, did you hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah, I heard you. I heard you. <clears throat> I thought you were going to keep going, but yeah, go ahead. I, I definitely heard about those mistakes you made. So, yeah, it, it, it kind of like, I didn't, I, I felt really like on top of the world when I made that first couple trades, but then when I made that same mistake at the end of the day, I felt like, oh, shit, I felt like I didn't win anything. You know what I mean? I still mm. feel like I'm beating myself up. Damn. So, it's kind of hard. There it to, is. Uh, maybe it's good to feel that way because I'll be more afraid next time, you know? There it is. There it is. Thank you so much for the call, Tom. Hey, uh, one more thing, Sal. Um, you know, the OTC stocks are not tradable on on, uh, on that platform, I found out. Yeah, you cannot trade any any uh, penny stocks or OTC market stocks uh, yeah. on on the on that app, on that app. So. Yeah. 
that's yeah. a bummer. So I'm just gonna have to wait till I get up there to to, yeah. to work on those some. But I uh, appreciate everything you do again, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Okay, have a good. One. All right. Yeah. I, I, no. I mean, I was listening to the guy. I was listening. People chat when I'm saying I wasn't listening. I was listening, but I got a, I got a couple of things I got to maneuver here. So when I when you guys call up, I let you guys you know just run with it. You you know people are listening to you. You know, it, it's not, you know, don't worry about what I'm doing. Just go ahead and, you know, do your thing. I was listening to the brother, man. Mr. Lloyd, you're on the air. <laughs> man, not not to be the dead horse, okay? Not to be the dead horse. But, I mean, Mr. Who's, who's that? And I'm using my phone, so I can't see that guy that said there's a link to a message board. Uh, DeMario um, Ware. DeMario Ware. Li- listen, Mr. Ware, I, and, and I'm going to be straight up with you. If you're not looking through court documents, don't don't depend on a message board to, to give you hope, okay? Like I said, at the end of that trial, the judge said, I read all of your letters to the, to the shareholders. I read them all. But the equity was long gone. And as soon as he said that, my money just went out down the toilet. Just, just, whoosh, just mm. went down the toilet. Mm. So... If, if, Mr. Ware, I, I recommend if, if once you go through the court documents and show me where that statement is, I, I don't want to see a message board. Don't don't give that stuff to people. Show them the facts mm. because hearsay doesn't go anywhere. Mm. So when you're playing with bankruptcy stocks, you need to go to the courts, not the message boards. What the hell is the message board going to show you? Not a damn thing. Mm. Show me, show me the court documents. That's that's where you need to be looking, and not on iHub and 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 oh, they're going to be saved. Let me put a thousand dollars in there and tell everybody. <laughs> no, that doesn't work that way, man. So, you know, I'm I, I'm, I'm not going to beat the dead horse anymore. I, I just want to let you guys know, you guys can pull the um, the transcripts and, and 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 see the last few minutes of what the judge said, and you guys can make a determination if if the if the shareholders are going to be saved or not. Okay, so. You guys can go off the message boards if you want to and, 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 and look for hope, but it, it, all the facts will lie in, in the court documents. So, Mr. Ware, if, if you're not an attorney at all, then then don't be giving out that information, man, because it's, it's worthless. Mm. So that's all I got to say. There you go. All right, thanks. Thank you. There it is, guys. I mean, look, you know, Mr. Lloyd, hey, look, he's been through it, man. You know, Mr. Lloyd's been through it. He's been through it. Let me drop one of Clue's bombs for Mr. Lloyd. You know, he's just been through it, that's all. You know? He's been through it, so he, 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 you know... He doesn't just know what he's talking about. He knows how it feels. You feel me? He knows how it feels. He knows how it feels, man. 313, you're on the air. Yo, what's up, Sal? What's going on with you? What's going on, man? Ain't nothing. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question, man. Um, out of those videos, the Tim Sykes video, okay. um, do do you got to watch all of those joints? Or is it just yeah, a why, few I mean, that you not? would recommend? Why not? I mean, mm-hmm. watch, watch all of them. If you got the time, watch all of them. I mean, you know, like I said, as much shit as we talk about the guy because how expensive his program is, uh, I, 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 he's very knowledgeable, and I, li- I love a lot of his old, his old stuff because he gave away a lot of good game in a lot of the older videos. And it wasn't about, you know, trying to sell a package and, you know, trying to move you to some kind of software. I mean, the old stuff is really about really how to look at patterns, how to you know, find, you know, really good stocks to trade and, 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 you know, how to break down SEC filings. I think those first eight DVDs are really just the best set of DVDs you can really give to anybody who wants to learn about, uh, you know, how to trade penny stocks. And that's why we give away the link to those DVDs in the chat room all the time, because I think that's just, you know, out of... In, in comparison to talking about it or going to look at some free video on YouTube, just go download the torrent and watch those, and I think you'll be up to speed on pretty much where everybody else is at. Word, word. And, and I ain't going to front to you, man. I just got, I figured out how to download them, so 
And I was just overwhelmed when I seen how much information it was. I was like, damn, so I went through all this? Yo, you must be a genius on that. Okay, so, um, yeah, so y'all talking about that SDOCQ, and I ain't going front. You know, it. I did have my hopes up high for that joint, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I made my money off of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just think a lot of people got in, they, they was chasing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. After, you know... At a certain point in that stock, it was just too much going on. The court situation, it, just too much, you know, and I think people chased at the wrong time for that. But uh, um, that's pretty much it, man. I'm, I'm chilling, man. I got back into uh, the NVAX. Yeah. I caught that at $2, so I, I bit back in that. Okay. And um, I'm still riding my, my, vape, my Vapor, V-P-O-R, okay. and that's been, um, I got over 100% gain on that. I got in at a... Uh, double o eight five and then i j you know i sold high you know what i'm saying i think i sold at like one eight okay i mean um what was that double o one eight i think i sold that and then i just got back into that so that's my thing man i'm just doing little i'm scalping mm -hmm. listening to y'all and um i'm enjoying the show and uh i appreciate everything you do bro appreciate it thanks for the call man uh, no, no doubt. All right. Yeah. I mean, uh, VPOR is that's 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 a nice little play. That's a nice little pump there that's going on over there. Uh, VPOR. I, I wouldn't even call it a. It's not even being pumped. It's just you know people who really you know like what the company's doing. It's a, it's a legit little company that they're trying to really you know move this whole idea of of the vape business. You know, before the whole you know cannabis rush, it was all about the vape business. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, they're a small little company trying to do their own thing. So uh, I think vape and, and, and cannabis plays kind of go, you know, hand in hand where you're going to start to see a lot of people start smoking that, that CBD oil. All right. All right. Just the last call I want to take on, you know, SDOCQ 702. James, what's up, man? No, it's Jay. Good try. Oh, Jay. What's going on? <laughs> you guys both use the same damn area code. What's up? Um, I'm calling in to beat a dead horse. Yeah. Um <laughs> I, I said in the chat that I wouldn't call in, but man, I'm loving was, I'm loving the feud today between uh, Mr. James Bond and uh, and Lloyd. So, <laughs> Mr. Man, Mr. Bond, I gotta say you're you're I'm gonna shit on both of you guys because I I think you you two deserve equal amount of shitting. Mm. You know that way you guys can learn something mm. and. On top of that, I'm going to, because since today was so great for me, I'm going to be a little bit uh, braggart and boastful and, uh, and share some of uh, my insights today. There we go. And then to follow up, uh, I'll cover a few of the stock picks that I mentioned mm -hmm. uh, earlier this week on Tuesday. So first off, Mr. Bond, um, I just don't like your trading style, man. You're... Whenever you play bankrupt plays, I have it even in my rule book that bankrupt plays are like very, very likely to get delisted. And when they sell off, they they want to try to change ownership uh, in order to you know bring back the profits. From the investor or trader's standpoint, you're very not you're highly unlikely to make quick profits in the long term. You know, like. To think of the bankrupt plays as a swing trade is doing it completely wrong. You have to play a good bankrupt play. You have to do it as a scalper, as a day trader. If you were to get into cozy and short it um, at when it was around like seventeen cents, you would have made a killing on that bankrupt bankruptcy. If you were into Hero Q, which was a petroleum company back in July, you would have made a killing, you know, shorting that play. If you were in Soon Q, which was a solar company back in March or May, um, you would have made a killing. And I did make a killing on Soon Q back in March and May um, when it was at a dollar and dropped 75 cents to 35 cents. Uh, and I shorted about 10,000 shares for a gain of 7,500 or something like that. Crazy. It was, it was ridiculous. Mm. But I made a killing shorting bankrupt plays. And the reason why... The main reason why people want to get into bankrupt plays is because they feel that when a bankruptcy goes through and the shares get restructured, 
you're issued new shares based on the old bankrupt shares. So potentially, the gain is out there to get a large chunk of the new new company. But if that new company never comes to fruition, all your money that you put in the bankrupt place is completely worthless. It's worth like nothing, less than the paper it's printed on. It's imaginary. You know, you just burned all your money for for that matter. Mm. So, bankrupt place is worse, in my opinion, than sub one dollar place. I'd rather play the sub one dollar plays and get, you know, two thousand shares, ten thousand shares, and playing a bankrupt place. Mm. It's just it's just high risk, and the reward is out there. Yeah. There's even a video that I posted in my playbook of this guy who dumped at least, I don't know, five grand, ten grand on Blockbuster, yeah. you know, during its bankruptcy. Yeah, there are a couple uh, articles think, uh, still out there, that guy, an idiot. Yeah. yeah, and I think he uh, he has two videos out there on YouTube, um, and it was... It's his name is Day Trader Dan, I believe, but it's on my playbook. If you want to, if, well, if you want to see that. Mm. All right, enough for Mr. Bond. I think I, uh, I punished you enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> but seriously, consider playing the upper one dollar to five dollar plays to 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 reduce your risk because it just it just hurts me when whenever somebody loses money on a play right. bankrupt play. Like it's it's heartache to hear somebody do so much research studying and effort to look these up and and not make anything out of it. But Mr. Bond, I was listening to you on the Discord the other day, and I feel that you need to refine your planning and your trading style. Um, Planning-wise, I think you need to determine your risk and reward ratio. Um, I want you to plan every single trade that you make, not just go in on a whim. Um, know exactly what your entry price is, how much risk you're willing to take at a loss, and how much gain you're willing to get out of it. And when you do make a gain, I want you to absolutely make out of it. You know, get out of that gain. When you make more than 8%, you know, take that money and run for your life. Hmm. Because gains are gains, and, you know, you just got to just gotta take and run with that money. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you make plan your trades. You know, know exactly what your entry and exit price is, and if it doesn't go your way, think of two options: either doubling down and averaging down, or you know get out ex- from there and cut your losses quickly. Otherwise, you know these plays that you have, you got to refine your strategies to make sure that you're absolutely following to your plan and you're sticking with your plan. Um, so that's. That's for you, uh, Mr. Lloyd. Um, now, last Tuesday, or this Tuesday, or this week, I mentioned uh, one of my plays called, on that watch list I made, EKSO. Yes, the uh, bionic suit company. Yeah, this was amazing because the, the candle there was, you know, a blip, a single jump that just covered, you know, all the losses in the past month. And then the day after, which was a Wednesday, and I believe you weren't streaming on, on that day, mm-hmm. it jumped like, I think, 20%. It was nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. That was a fantastic day. <laughs> it's not doing so well today um, and the following days after it. It's cooling down. That, it's cooling down. That Thursday it was absolutely fantastic for EKSO. And for those guys who made it big on that, congratulations. Um, I also mentioned a couple other biotechs because um, we're going after the healthcare pursuit. Yeah. Um, ACRX, AMRN, GERN. Um, those I, I mentioned are, were swing trades, and I think they're finally paying off yesterday and today. Uh, most of them gained roughly, I think, three. Three to five yeah, percent, but nonetheless, ACRX. I've been watching ACRX because I, I love how stable the chart looks on that one. Yeah, nonetheless, it was doing pretty good. Um, one of my picks was a substantial loss, and that was INVT and ESK, the mining company. But it wasn't too bad. It was only 10, 10 cent loss over the whole day. 
But if you made out on EKSO, it would have covered all of that and then some. Um, as for ARRI, you guys have been talking a lot about ARRY. Yeah. This one, this one, I believe, is on the level of AMD level. Mm. Um, I feel like AMD, when AMD got that China deal back in late, late May, and then they re revitalized that deal in August, this is what it is um, like that China deal for AMD. Yeah. This is like almost equivalent for ARI. Because right. um, I can see it right now that ARI is going to play the five dollar to seven fifty mark mm. for the next couple months and you're gonna have great volatility with Airy. But if, but this is such a small company that there is potential for buyout. The market cap is almost one billion dollars. So if this is if this is a really large significant biotech with um, items in its pipeline, I would imagine that um, that uh, that large biotech out there is going to buy this up. Uh, what's that name? It starts with an A. It's like A. -E. Mm. Help me out here. There's a biotech. large biotech. Yeah. But nonetheless, A R R Y. This ticker is going to trade for a good solid month with high volatility, mm -hmm. upwards to eight to eight to twenty percent worth of volatility. Um, changes of say Allergy. ten to to forty percent. Yes, Allergan. Allergan. That's it. Yeah. Allergan. Allergan is going to have eyes on Ari because yeah. it's a one million dollar company. They just recently made a purchase, I think, too. Uh, yeah, they exactly. just recently made a purchase uh, that ran uh, that what caused uh, Galt to run because they had bought a company that was yeah uh, tour. They bought Tabira Tabira a couple of days ago, ten days ago. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I know from experience that these biotechs love to purchase these companies between right after October, mm -hmm. right at, right starting uh, September into October, where the fiscal year rolls over. Mm -hmm. From October upwards to February is going to be where all the big buyouts are going to happen. And this is when the markets are actually going to be really good if the interest rate remains low. Mm. So Allergan is going to definitely be looking for at least two or three more buyouts, and ARI is definitely on their target list. So I expect volatility on ARI. It's definitely an AMD-like level trade, and definitely get on uh, and watch ARI at the top of your list. And that's all I got for ARI. <laughs> um, and even mentioning AMD, AMD was fantastic today as yeah, well. I, even I, I, was, I was so mad they didn't stay above seven, but it's okay. At least it touched it. So that's a good news. Too. Oh, my goodness. Um, I doubled down on AMD. All my... <laughs> All my gains I made today, I just went straight into AMD. Whenever it dipped a little bit, mm -hmm. I, I bought another 100 shares, dipped a little bit, bought another 200 shares. I think AMD is going to pop back over 7. Oh, yeah. And I see AMD continue at, going. I see AMD at $10. Uh, you know, either early January, mid-February, we're going to be talking about a $10 stock here, I'm praying. It, it's, it's targeted targeting that direction um i would not be surprised if if it touches eight uh, I'm, I'm hoping it will it's the the sights are there the stars are aligned mm -hmm. it just has to happen you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right um i believe that's all i got uh, oh i made money today on i forgot about my trade today uh, I didn't mention AUPH. I traded the forty cent going up and forty cents going down for about two thousand shares. That was really nice. The fact that it ran up and then you know if you had never shorted anything in your life, this was like a perfect short from three seventy all the way down. <laughs> it didn't. It uh, didn't fight you or anything. It just boom slowly kind of gave it, us itself away. It yeah. just melted. Yeah. Uh, the short I remember more clearly than the the long. Because when I was uh, when I was long on it, I was just scanning through my TOS. There was no trades up to like nine forty five, ten. Mm -hmm. I didn't get in until around nine fifty. So I was really nervous that that wasn't going to do anything. So I gradually wrote it for forty cents. But when it came down, it came down hard. It came down. I entered my short at three seventy five and took it all the way down to three thirty six. Mm -hmm. 
and I was just sitting there just watching it melt and destroy itself. I was lucky enough that IB had 2,000 shares to short, and I snatched that up. Fantastic. Thank you, Interactive Brokers. Oh, and another thing. For those of you guys who are trading on large institutional brokers like E-Trade, Thinkorswim, Charles Schwab, uh, Fidelity, those are good institutional brokers if you're trading in your 401k, if you, if you want tax-deferred trades. But, and they're... Their costs, their transactional costs, are like seven fifty to like ten bucks. It's not worth it. Definitely open a Robinhood account, U Stock Trade account, um, interactive broker accounts where it's based per shares. Uh, each share that I trade on inter, um, interactive brokers is only five one thousandths of a cent. Mm -hmm. So, I was very fortunate for uh, interactive brokers to have me uh, have a small account in there. Um, but overall, if you have three brokers, you know, you can have upwards of nine day trades. trades yeah. so that's fantastic. Um, I feel like I'm missing one more thing. I think that's about it. Alrighty. Um, I hope everybody makes some good gains for tomorrow or for, uh, for Monday. Uh, this is a couple stocks to look at. So definitely, uh, Keep at it. Keep keep on learning, and, uh, and stop promoting these worthless sub one dollar stocks. Gosh, you guys are hurt, You're breaking my heart. Jeez, I hate it when you guys hey, say gain, like, "Hey, gains are gains, man. Gains are gains." Okay. <laughs> I know, but I, I hate it when you guys are are saying like, "Oh my goodness, I lost this much money on this and that because I played a one a sub one dollar stock." Oh man, it, just just remember, guys, when whenever you you brag or promote something about losing money. There's some guy out there that's having a major heartache that you're losing money. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Catch you guys later. All right. Appreciate the call, Jay. All right. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Good call by Jay as always. Good call. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, look, you know, certain stocks are for some people. Certain stocks aren't for other people. And I, and I, I, I just, I respect it all. I respect it all, man. Everybody's got their own way, and that's, 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 I respect that, man. I respect something that doesn't work for, you know, that doesn't work for me might work for the, you know, for the next guy. You know, James plays OTC uh, bankrupt stocks. I, you know, I've, I've learned I can't play them, you know. But if it's working for him, you know, who am I to say, you know, uh, that, that's, that's a bad thing. You know, I want to be able to trade like I want to trade. So the last thing I need to do is to tell somebody else what they're doing isn't right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. You know, if as long as it's making you some green, it is what it is. You know? So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, make sure next week you pick up some of that VTSI. So that good old VTSI, we're moving in the right direction, growing volume slowly but surely. All right, growing volume slowly but surely. That ATLS too, that that bankruptcy play, or well, it's not a bankruptcy play; it's out of bankruptcy now. But it's moving all the way up. Both of those two stocks I've been pushing real hard on my on my Twitter account, on my Twitter account. You know, ATLS, let's, let's take it all the way up to $3. It's definitely worth it. You know what I mean? Pre-bankruptcy, we were talking about a, a $1.6 billion company. In re that's in revenue. That's in revenue. Not assets, in revenue. All right. So, uh, you know, ATLS looking to get back to its glory days of uh, $15, $16 a share back in uh, 2013, 2014. All right. We hope to take it as far as we can. The goal is three for right now. Uh, VTSI, VT, Victor, Tom, Sam, Igloo. All right. Yes, indeed. Uh, you want a lucrative stock that's less than 10 cents? A lucrative stock that's less than 10 cents that you can buy on any broker? Right now, I've, I've been very impressed with MSTX. You know, MSTX is a stock that we, we, we said that we were going to watch 
um, yesterday and, and today um, based on what it was going to do at 9 and 10. And it bounced off 10. It touched 9 and then bounced off 10. So this is, this is going to be very interesting to see whether or not this stock is going to start doing something here. So I, I would really look at MSTX next week, early next week, and, and see if this is a stock that might be trying to make a move here. That might be trying to make a move here. Break out of the 11s and, you know, maybe we can get 14, 15 cents. Who knows? But MSTX, I, I, as I said, you know, look, they had the drug failure. They had the drug failure. Horrible thing. All right. But maybe the stock has finally found, you know, some support and is ready to get its act back together. MSTX. Okay. MSTX. Yes, indeed. VTSI, we're going to keep rocking with it. 313, you're back on the air. 313, you there? Uh, you can hear me? All right, yeah, there you are. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm glad you touched on that uh, MSTX. Mm -hmm. um, I got into that. I caught it when it went down to like nine cents, and I got into it. Um, is there anything special going on with that company as far as, like, it's not in no trouble or nothing like that? Right? No, I mean, it's just a stock that had, you know, a, a very terrible thing happened. Uh, you know, it had its its primary drug fail, uh, you know, and, and, you know, look, people are going to take their money elsewhere and sell the stock, and the stock becomes very bearish. But like everything else, uh, you know, eventually there is a price where people feel that there's value, and, you know, that's called the 52 week low or you know what I'm saying support there's another word for that as well and you know it, it's going to move from there and that's an opportunity for you to come in and be able to take advantage of that low price and and ride it back up to uh you know considerable profit yes sir and that's and I and I'm glad I got in at that nine because mm -hmm. when you talked about it um on one of those shows this week you talked about it I said yeah I'm a Keep my eye on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so another thing I wanted to ask, uh, when a company gets delisted from the NASDAQ, yeah. um, is that an uh, indication that they're going to go down, or, or could they just like be delisted and still try to go higher? Oh, no, no. When a stock is delisted from the NASDAQ, it goes to OTC markets almost automatically. That's just, you know, the, it, it, it's a tier system, okay? So... You've got your entry level, small kind of, uh, you know, or, or, or you're simply paper pushing type companies at the OTC level, right? They trade over the counter. They're not very popular. Or sometimes you just have companies that are just dirt that, that just want to be cheap and save money on, on fees, uh, you know, or you, you, you have like an ADR or a foreign company and you just want to be able to have access to U.S. markets. You trade on OTC markets. Well, if you're a little bit more respectable company. You've got a lot of things more going on. You're looking to possibly uh, attract higher net worth investors and investment banks. You trade on the NASDAQ or the American Stock Exchange, what was what used to be called the American Stock Exchange. If you're a much more developed company, uh, you know, multiple billions of dollars in assets, significant amount of analysts following the company, uh, you know, in, incredible long-term uh, you know, history and, and within, you know, your business, you're probably the market leader in, in, your, in your industry. You trade on, on the, uh, you know, Dow Jones exchange. So uh, mm -hmm. it's all, let, you, know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's all levels to that shit. You know what I mean? So yeah, OTC work, markets work. going down shows that, you know, obviously some, you know, significant, uh, you know, conditions have, have you know, unfortunately impacted your company and you got to, you know, get back down. But it doesn't mean you can't eventually move back up, but moving back up may take, you know, three, four, five years. Who knows? Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up, man. Thanks for that info. Hey, what you drinking over there? You, you yeah, got man. 40, I, 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 I got the Miller High Life. You know, and I'm just sipping on it, man. It's, it's okay. How, how it, oh, man. You know, that's not, a, not, that, not, that definitely not as strong as the uh, Colt 45, but it's all right. It's all right. It's a little watered okay. down, though. Okay, okay. Enjoy yourself, man. All right, I'm going to listen in. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call. No doubt. All right. 
yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, MSTX. Just watch it. I'm not saying jump in it. I'm not saying jump in it. I'm saying watch it, and and you know, we'll see if if this is real. But I won't turn down, you know, eleven to fifteen. You know, that that that's 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 a decent game. That's a decent game on on you know a couple thousand shares, at that price. You know, that's a pretty decent game. In fact, let me uh, look at the percentage calculator here just to get an, an accurate number. You know, that's 36%. That's very respectable. 11 cents to 15 cents is 36%. That's, that's not bad. You know, that's not bad on $1,000. That's not bad on $2,000. That's a decent return. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a decent return. You feel me? But you know, like uh, you know, uh, you know, bad scientist says, yeah, let's let's you know, let's let's verify, it. let's 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 see it start doing its thing. You know, let's actually see it start moving. Let's actually see it start moving. Uh, when I look at some of the other. Let me see here, street.com. Some of the other biggest gainers today. Uh, somebody had brought up Deutsche Bank the other day. I thought it was just way too expensive, but Deutsche Bank ran today. Uh, again, we had NVFY, uh, Ericsson EAC. I, I, I thought every, I, every time I see EAC, I think it's the phone company, but it's, it's a completely different company. Uh, other than that, though, I didn't see anything else on the list. I was like, eh. TWER is a stock we talked about. M A M R S. We talked about that. Uh, but other than that, PGNX is a stock that we, you know, when we first started the show, kind of brought up a little bit, but it's kind of going the leeway. Uh, now, EVI. EVI is one, one stock that we've talked about here on the show before. I haven't talked about recently. Uh, what do you guys think about PTN being up there today? You know, that was really interesting to see PTN make a run today. Uh, you know, is is this a is this a real change in direction? Mm, I don't know. I'd like to see a lot more before we, you know, jump on the PTN bandwagon again. But, uh, you know, we'll see. But it, it was interesting to see that, though. It was interesting to see uh, PTX, PTX, you know, PTX with the run recently, you know, after after going from, you know, 52 to 66, coming back down, all right, so PTX with a little, with a little bit of movement. PTX with a little bit of movement. And PTX is one of those things that seems like when it gets into the low 50s, when it gets into the low 50s recently anyway, these last couple of days, it's been a, a good buy at that price. It's been a good, pretty good buy at that price, running as high as 60, yeah, about 66, 67. 66, 67. Yeah. Yeah, so PTX one to not forget about, but you know I I, I like what Jay was talking about uh, possible buyout for uh, ARRY. Now, you know intraday I, I don't like it. You know I haven't liked it recently intraday, but he he made some interesting arguments when he said, look, it it's a billion dollar market cap, very small company. Yes, it actually does have quite a few drugs under under the pipeline in fact you can open up the 10k and they, they list them all out in the 10k so it, it it makes sense allergen has been you know on the hunt for some acquisitions you know but you, you've got to you know want to be in the stock for some time to, to to see that come to fruition you know but it, it could be as soon as next week it could be next month but uh you know, he, he makes a strong argument. He makes a strong argument for that happening, uh, for, for A R R Y. Okay, makes a strong argument. Uh, v B L T. 
uh, VBLT Vascular Biogenics. What do you know about the company? I don't know anything about it. Don't know anything about uh, VBLT. Don't know anything about this company at all. But hey, Connor, I see Connor in the chat room. Tell me what you think about that the stock I, I, I uh, tweeted to you. I kind of look at a stock that I I wanted to get past him. And tell me what you think about it. Uh, but shout out to the people who are in uh, NGBL though, man. NGBL with that nice little 20% gain today. I, I was a nice little 20% gain in NGBL. Another OTC play. You know, these OTC plays are shitting on the NASDAQ plays now, man. We, we talk about 6 7%. These OTC plays are putting up, you know, 7, 9, you know, 20, 30, 40. So, you know, shit. NASDAQ, get your shit together, man. Get your shit together. You know? Because these other ones are making moves. Yeah, you're making moves. INNV, we talked about INNV on the move. INNV on the move. We were talking about 25 cents just here a couple days ago, right on here on the show. Up three pennies. Now we could be looking at 30 next week. 30, 35. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, CVM. Uh, CVN, yeah. Sell, sell side corp. 10% gain. Amex play. Amex play. CVN. Yeah, we'll see what happens with, with that. Looks like it dropped off there a couple days ago. Uh, slowly kind of working its way back up. Uh, decent volume, too. Decent volume, too. Okay. There we go, Kind of Appreciate it. All right. Uh, ARWR. What is that? ARWR. Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals, you know, looks kind of bearish. Might actually probably be a good. Well, actually, it looks like there's kind of support there at the 720s. There's support at 720s when it looks like Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. Um, what was it today? Five percent today? No, actually, damn, less than a percent today. Mm, but it wasn't. It, it it spiked up, but it gave it back. It spiked up, but it gave it all back. Why was the stock up anyway? Why was the stock up? Arrowhead cuts a deal with uh, Amgen. Amgen is a big-ass pharmaceutical company. All right. Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals gained more than 10% in early morning trading. Uh, move was sparked by collaboration with Amgen to develop and possibly commercialize two of Arrowhead's experimental cardiovascular therapies okay good move good move all right nice i mean nice news you know unfortunately investors didn't want to stick by and allow the products or profits to grow they took what they can and ran with it they took what they can and ran with it uh this deal is important to arrowhead because it provides much needed infusion of cash interesting Interesting that the investors didn't take this into account. The biotech is set to receive $35 million in upfront payments, along with another $21.5 million in equity investment by Amgen in Arrowhead's common stock. That's very interesting. This is a big deal for a company uh, that recently came out of the recent quarter with less than $45 million in cash and has a burn rate of a currently 19 million per quarter. All right, so interesting news. Interesting news there. Interesting news. Yeah, Michael 91, NVFY. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's something, like I said, when we talk about those 30-day holds, right? Those 30, when well, you see a nice pattern, you know, get into that 30 day. If something happens within that 30 days, you can take advantage of that. NVFY was exactly what I did. 206. Mr. Lloyd. You, now, you know what I realized? And, and, and 
And with all the confusion and everything, I, I think we got I got a solution for, for all this, this hate and discontent that we're having right now in this chat room. No, man, I, I don't think there's any hate. It's just a oh, uh, it is, it is because it's, it's, it's a lot of a lot of people upset, and and I, I'm upset. But you know what? I think I have a solution, and I think it's reasonable. Because I, I, Bond says he picked good picks. Some people say he don't. If people are going to call up picks and, and think they're good picks. Why don't they describe what kind of play it is? If it's a long-term play or, or is it a day trade or, um, I mean, explain what, what type of pick do you think it is. Don't just say, hey, it's going to go up and, and you might be just scrapping for pennies because I might be a long-term player and looking for 20 cents and all you're looking for is a penny. Mm. I mean, cause, because some people may put 10 or 15,000 in, as, as James might do in one day, and, and look for two or three cents. But as a person like myself who doesn't have a lot of capital, hell, if I put two or three thousand in, I'm going to need you know five to ten cents. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. So, Bond, I think I, if, if you're going to call out players, man, and you you may not have shitty players, but if you're going to call out players like SDOCQ, why don't you describe what type of investment you're getting in? Because when you when the when the stock fails, you said, did you take profits? And, and my interpretation was that this was going to be a long-term play. So if people are going to call out plays, man, and, not, and I'm not just, you know, saying bomb, but anybody that's calling out these plays, why don't you describe what type of player you are and, and if this is a long-term play, a short-term play. And that, that eliminates any confusion because if you call out a play, it may, it may not be for me. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, and plus it, it gets to, it gets, you get to know what that person is and, so, and their trading style. So, I mean, I, I think that's a good solution. Like INFV, I'm saying INFV is a long-term play. Mm -hmm. you, you, you'll probably scalp it to 30 cents because you've been in it long enough. You've, you've seen it for months how yeah. it's been fluctuating. So you could determine on what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's, that's just my two cents, man. I, and I, I think that may help. So if, if people are calling in and they're calling out plays and they feel like it's going to go up, you know, Ask them, do they think it's a long-term play or a short-term play? Right. So that's, that's all I got to say, man. And I, it's Friday night, man. I'm, I'm excited, but I think this will definitely help to, to eliminate a lot of the pressure it's about, bad. oh, he fucked up. It, it, it didn't go up at all. It only went up two pennies. Yeah. And, and, you know, so, you know, maybe our expectations are too high. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if, so... So if you think something's going to go up, James, you know, I mean, you may be putting twenty thousand dollars in there, and and hell, you'll make two thousand dollars off two cents. But a person like myself putting five hundred, or some guys in here putting in a hundred, they're expecting larger returns off their one hundred dollars, and not just a, a hundred and two dollars, because they still need to take their their um, their their commission fees off if they're using the right broker. And, and, and I don't want to buy a stream. Well, did you take profits? Because they could only had $102 when it moved up two cents and then it crashed 40 cents. So that's, that's all I got to say, man. So I guess when people call up, can you just ask them, you know, is this a long term play, short term play? That's, that's, that's it. That's all I'm asking for. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call, man. Cool, man. Thanks. All right. So, I mean, I, 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 I'll start doing that. I start doing it. I, I, I think that's something that I, I, kind of already do you know i always ask hey man what you know what do you think is this going to happen right away is it going to be something that we're going to have to be patient about you know i know it's something that i do when i talk about a stock i, I never say hey you know this is going to be you know today tomorrow or unless we're talking about a drug failure something like that where we just know it's going to be a very momentary you know kind of event uh but other than that when i when i give a play please always believe it's going to be something where uh you, you're going to have to put your 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 money in and, and be a little bit patient and you know wait on it you know what i'm saying collect all those gains over multiple days you feel me but look you know look mr lloyd is, is feeling some kind of way i i think he hasn't yet gotten over Losing the SDOCQ because I know he could have put that money in in an INNV. He could have put it in a lot of other stocks that have done amazingly well since then. You know, so he's feeling a little, you know, 
you know. Like, like what the hell? What's going on, Penny Hat? What's going on, Penny Hat? What's going on, Penny Hat? You know, but, uh, uh, you know, other than that, though, the, you know, I, I didn't, you know, besides any, like, new, new plays, I didn't see anything come onto the map these last two days that I was like, okay, next week we got to watch this, this. I didn't see anything. If anybody saw a stock that, like, came on the map over the last two trading days, I didn't see one. A stock that kind of just came on a map. Eight three two, you're on the air. What's up, Kyle? It's Connor. Connor, what's good, man? Oh, not much. Man, I got some some drama going on on Friday yeah. night. Uh, yeah, you you already know how it is, man. Uh, yeah, no, but Lloyd did. That's a, that's a, that is a good idea, though. Lloyd, you know, he hit it on the head. But it really just goes back to people, man. You just got to, everybody, there's no wrong or right way to trade, you know. There's so many different ways and people arguing about this and, oh, day traders or, you know, they don't know what they're doing and this and that. I mean, every they got million-dollar traders who trade, day trade, there's million-dollar swing traders, and there's million-dollar position traders, you know. You it, it's, it's all on what what's going to work for you. So I think, I think the problem people are having is exactly what Lloyd said, you know I mean? You, on one hand, you got a guy who maybe either has more money or he's holding it longer or, or you know, and then this person might be new and he's not knowing what this guy's talking about. Right. And, and and that's that's another thing is, is when you're following other people's picks, you got to know what they're talking about because that's the other night when that guy was saying Warrior Trader was a scam. I mean, I'm not saying the guy, you know, I, I, don't, I don't care. I wouldn't pay for his service, but I know he's a good trader, but the reason people lose money behind him is because he's a scalper. And when he says get, he's getting in, by the mm. time he's getting out, he's selling his shares to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah, he doesn't stick around long enough for, for the right. new he's a pure Right, he's a pure scalper, but he's a good trader. You know, I watch his positions. He's a very good trader at what he does. You know, everybody's different. You can't say somebody's not a good trader if they're making money. They sure. just do it differently than you do, right. you know? Right. So, I mean... It's just all about if you're going to follow somebody's plays, you got to know what they're doing. You have to know exactly what they're talking about, how far they're talking about holding it, you know, because everybody is different, you know. So, and it's true. But, yeah, I, I looked at that website. I, I like that. It goes with what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. About the um, the one you had, we were talking about. But I think that's a. Uh, I don't know. I like it. I looked at the website and stuff, but yeah, I just wanted to call in about that. But w I don't know, man. Um, I think everybody gets wrapped up in, in, in so much about who's right and who's wrong and right. this and that. And I don't think there's any right way to do this, you know, or wrong way to do it. I think the only only right way is if it makes you money. That's the only right way. There you go. So if it's making you money, keep doing it. But other than that, I think people need it. Whenever they hear people take, if people if they get to go and follow someone's play, at least have the common sense to know what the fuck the person's talking about. I mean, come on, man. You know, yeah. that's yeah. why I hate it when people talk about, oh, this person lost me money. No, you lost your own self money. Mm. You know, I mean, come on. If you're going to put your money in behind somebody else that gave you a, a idea, at least know what they're looking at. You know, don't just blindly go in thinking, oh, this guy said SBOCQ is going up, you know. I mean, you don't know where he, he where is up to him. Up might be two cents because he might have put 50000 in it or whatever, you know. There you go. So you don't, you don't know. You got to, man, just <laughs> people got to, got to, Man, you got to stop following everybody's pick for pick. You know that ain't gonna get you nowhere. I mean, it does. I mean, it can. I mean, it's good to have a second. That's why I'm here on this show because I like to get a second set of eyes. But I'm not just gonna blindly jump in something because someone said this is a good play. You know. But I don't know. That's just my opinion, I guess. I don't know. Me personally. And this is just me personally, you know, and this is how I, I, I like to trade. I do my little scans for the night. I look at what plays I might want to look at, mm -hmm. you know, and I keep an eye on them. 
but I'm mainly, you know, I'm, I'm waking up in the morning and I'm looking what's gapping up. I'm looking at what's moving, you know, but I'm a day trader. You know, this wouldn't work for Bond because he's, a, you know, and it's not to say that I'm wrong. It's not to say that he's wrong for not wanting to play, play do the way I do because he's just a different type of trader. But for anybody who's a day trader, I would recommend you don't have to listen to me. I would recommend, you know, you can have your picks that you want to look at and keep an eye on, but Man, go look at the go look at the top percent gainers of the day when you wake up. You can see what's gapping up. You can get an idea of what has volume. What's what's being traded in the pre market. You know, if something's gapping up five percent or ten percent or more, and it's got strong volume in pre market. It's a good chance it's going to be running whenever the market opens. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but it's a good chance it's going to be running whether it goes up or down. But you can capitalize either way. So I mean, that's how I go at it. You know. I mean, a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't want to buy a stock that's already up." Well, I mean, if you if if you're trying to if you're planning on trying to make some money that day and you want to get in the stock that's, and that's get out what you that day, do almost. I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, just because the stock's up doesn't mean it's going up more, and well, maybe yeah. it's up, but that's it's right. a good. It could go down, and that's a good thing too. Okay, if it gapped up ten percent in pre market, well, then be looking at it. If it starts going down, you can short it. But that's. When you're looking at these stocks that are on the top percent gainers list, it's not necessarily that you're saying, oh, I want to buy this because it's already up and it's going to go up more. You might be looking to short it, yep. but it just gives you an idea of what stocks are moving, what stocks are people interested in at this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. That's what the top percent gainers are going to do. If they're gapping up, they got people looking at them, people are interested in them, and that's what's going to be moving that day. Nine times out of ten, when you look at the top percent gainer list, in at uh, pre market, those same names. Five, if there's ten names on the top percent gainers list, at least five of those names are going to be there throughout the day. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So they were moving whenever you woke up, and they were still the top gainers of that day from whenever whenever the market closed. Right. So that goes to tell you right there that, that that's a a good probability chance if if that's what you want to do to day trade. You know? So I mean, that's what I would recommend. Uh, you know, it, it works well for me. I mean. I know you look at a top percent gainers list too. You know, I mean, those yeah. are the stocks that's moving. You know, that's that good. particular day, you can have the other stocks that you want to look at and stuff. But I mean, that's a good idea of what's going to be in play that day. You know, that's very true. That's very true. Thank you so much for the call, Connor. All right, well. All right. Yeah. Hey, look, you know, Connor spitting some truth, man. Connor spitting some truth. Let me drop another bomb for him. I'll, 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 I'll let's drop the. Uh, Atomic bomb for him, man. He, he dropped some mega heat. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Connor. You know, talking about making money. You know, he's, he's been making a lot of money in options, man. If you go to Connor's um, Twitter page, he posts all his results for the day. You know, and, and Connor... I, I think Connor doesn't even sit in front of the computer. He he does it on his on his uh, cell phone. He plays options. He he does it right on his cell phone. Okay. He does it right on his cell phone. Does it right on his cell phone. Uh, somebody said, "What was that?" Uh, T. R. Colby. I think you had said something about I should start a a Patreon for the show. I don't know. You know the thing about. When you start taking money from people, man, the thing about when you start taking money from people is that they start feeling like they own you. You know what I'm saying? They start feeling like they own you. Like if you ever been down and out before and you had somebody who was maybe helping you out here and there, you know, if, if they ask you to do something and you don't want to do it, they'll use that against you. Like, well, I've been giving you, you know, money. Like, damn, like, I, I thought you was helping me out. I didn't know you was trying to control me. And that's the thing about that kind of thing is like if, if I get to a point where I start asking, you know, money from people, I, I, I you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, sure, there's some things that I probably would want to upgrade that I wish I didn't have to take out money from my trading account to use or my, my daily expenses. All right. Because I got to, you know, when you're a trader, you got to have your own budget. And, you know, I got my me and my girl, we're trying to get this credit repair business off the ground and. So, you know, there's some things that I, I know I could probably do to really upgrade this. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, little things that when I put it together and then I come back to the family with the with what the plan is and stuff like that. Because I don't just like, hey, give me, you know, make a donation. Give me give me some money. Or, you know, I, I, this is going to be the plan. This is where the money's going to go. This is how it's going to be improved. 
with your investment. You know, that's what I like to do. So when I have that together, then I can come with y'all with that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, you say, can you watch your live stream video at another time? Yes, Mike, uh, Michael Valley. Every live stream show is uh, posted back on YouTube after like 30, you know, anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes after it airs. It just kind of comes automatically uh, back on to uh, YouTube. So they, they record everything, even though this is live. That's why I put the chat show up, because people wanted to know what the hell were you guys talking about. You know, so that's why now I put the chat on the screen so that even if, you know, some of the dudes was hitting me up like, man, I'm in Korea right now. But I would love to know what you guys were chatting about as I was speaking. So now it's on the chat room. So you can literally see what people are talking about, what tickers, what, you know, everything that was going on. Okay. Yeah, Connor, if you're in the chat room, go ahead and put your uh, Twitter account up in there. Treasure Hunter, you're back on the air, man. What's good? Damn, can we all just smoke a big blunt and get along? What the hell is going on? You and smoking <laughs> blunts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I just said, you know what I'm saying, make peace, damn, you know? Mm -hmm. But no, uh, this goes back to a couple of nights ago. Uh, well, no, no, not a couple of nights ago, last week's show. Mm -hmm. that, um, uh, I remember our last caller calling, and he was blowing up this one ticker, blowing it up, blowing it up. And then I looked at the chart. You looked at the chart. I'm like, what the fuck? He's seeing this shit. Yeah. And sure enough, the next day, it opened up and rocketed down. So I'm like, you know, you can't, I'm telling you, like, the new guys, you know, like, new new people in the chat room, that, you know, you can't really, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, depend on other people's tickers, you know. Yeah. Because I was like, you know, I think he tried to sabotage this, that, that, uh, that new guy who called in, nobody never heard of. You remember that dude? The the caller you never heard of who, who called? No, no, today? that one caller, the one caller. Yeah, the one caller. Uh, the one caller came up with this one ticker. Yeah, yeah, buy this. It's gonna be a hot ticker. And yeah, you know, he was talking market. about um, Zoma or something like that. Yeah, X O M A. Some, some, yeah, something some like shit. That. I'm like, what the hell? So, so then again, I want to tell, like, you know, yeah, when we come Zoma. up, like X O M A, yeah. and then like, I mean, look what's happened to the stock since he talked about it. It's been. You know, pretty much a, a, a shit. You know, just yeah, just yeah, stuff. right, yeah, right. So you know, like uh, like us, the He's locals. You know, me, Treasure Hunter. You know, Blue Bear. You know, uh, the, you know, the local people always call you. So mm -hmm. we always come with good tickers. You know, yeah. but um, you know, what I'm saying like it's when you get into these tickers, it's up to you. Like I say, it's up. You can buy it, but it's up to you when the bell. Because somebody might say, okay, I'm gonna go long on this one, and it might be short. You know, right? But you know, what I'm saying. Like, uh, basically, when you get in, get in these stocks, get ready with your, your finger on the trigger, the bell, because don't tell them what it might do, you know, it might go against you. That's true. You know? I mean, I had that a couple of times, too. But, you know, then again, um, like, when I usually call in, I, I know for sure it's running, and I ain't trying to rip nobody off, because I know I'm definitely going to call your show. I don't want to be back, you know, calling with a shit long face like, man, yeah. my bad, you know? I usually keep, you know, be running for a couple of days so people get some bread, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But, yeah, but I didn't think Blue, uh, not Blueberry, but James Bond, you know what I'm saying, meant for that to happen, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, you know, but then again, I even broke my own rule because I, I found that, that uh, the DVD, uh, Blockbuster on Day Trader Dave, I'm telling, you know, everybody else, you know, watch out for it, watch out for it. And my ass got sucking into it, too. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, broke my rule. Lesson number one: stick with your own rules. You know, yeah. he's <laughs> got a. Uh, I think his channel is called Man on a Mission or some bullshit like that. And uh, you know, he 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 posts. He he barely posts anymore. But um, <laughs> yeah, after know, that, I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, he barely. He's he's. I don't know. He's kind of a joke to me. But it is what it is, man. Yeah. Oh, then again, too. Um, you write about uh, some of these videos, bro. Um, when you get a good underground video, definitely download it. Do what you got to do, because when I first got started nine months or you know nine months ago, whatever, um, my videos is not out there. You can't find them. So the real videos you can make money on, they like taking them off the air. You know they want you to buy this shit now or something. Yeah. So you get a good one, freaking do whatever you got to do, record it. You know, <laughs> right, right. keep it in the no, yeah, bro, you got it. But yeah, I keep continue watching the show. But you know, everybody just get along out there. You know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Thank you, man. Yeah, man, you got it, cause. Yeah, I mean, uh, I need to get a hold of uh, 
that Spike Ability DVD. I need to hit my boys up in India. I don't know those Indian guys, man. You you you, you hit them up on like Freelancer.com or Odesk or something like that. He's like, hey man, I need I need some of you guys to go find this this DVD. Next thing you know, they put it up, crystal clear, crystal clear. And I can't find a Spike Ability DVD anywhere. So sorry to say it, Tim. Sorry, but I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Seven eight six. You're on the air. All right. Hey, Sal. How you doing? Doing good. Who am I speaking with? Oh, you're speaking with Sam, man. Sam, I'm a big fan of the show. Big fan of the stock game. Yes, indeed. Uh, so what's up, Sal? How's everything, man? Everything is good, man. You live on the air. If you can get a little closer to the phone, so we can hear you a little bit. Uh, is this better, Sal? Now come a little bit closer. Now, what about now? Yeah, perfect. There you go. That's perfect. Hello? Yes, you're you're alive and clear. Uh, questions about the stock game. Mm -hmm. But uh before I get into that, I want to I want I want to know your opinion on something. Uh I want your opinion on these uh these dirty little niggers running around. Get out of here, you damn nigger! There you go. There, there, there you go. There, there you go. I, I knew he was going there. Now how you like to be called that? I already knew he was a joke. I already knew he was a joke. Uh, I, kn I knew he was a joke. Just something about it just sound clown. I already knew it. I already knew it. Yeah, I, I had a feeling about it. When he sound he sounds like you know one of those kind of. He, he, yeah, he's just you know. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, uh, that's the thing. It's like they think like that word like hurts your feelings or something like that. That's the only thing they got. You know what I'm saying? I already knew he was going to go there. What a joke. What a joke. What a joke. Let me see something real quick. Mm. Yeah, I already knew he was going to go there. Let me see something real quick. And my thing is, man, you broke as fuck because you, you calling me from a Metro PCS number, man. You calling me from a damn Metro PCS number. You you ought to be watching my show and enjoying it, like you say you do. Broke ass motherfucker. Got the nerve to call me from a damn Metro PCS. And shout out to people on who on Metro. You know Metro, do your thing, do your thing. But I'm just saying, he, you got the nerve to talk about somebody calling me from that broke piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm mm mm. Uh, yeah, I, I already knew he was. I already knew he was. Yeah, yeah, Thriller Ali. I already knew. I already knew. I, I, again, we used to deal with this a lot. For all you new people, you remember we used to deal with this a lot. Let me fix my chat room. We used to deal with this a lot when the show first started. When the show first started. But, you know, look. Haters are going to hate, but we know that we know there's a lot of good people out there. But, you know, people who want to waste time and we're still going to sit here and talk about stocks. We're still going to be in here making money. So, I mean, what, what did you what did you accomplish? You didn't you didn't accomplish anything. That's you see that's why I love this business. All you can do is is say words. You can't touch the money. You, you can't touch, that's why I love, you know, when you are a trader, man, that's, that's, I, I, I'm sorry, but like moments like that clarify for me why I do this, why I promote, why I talk about, you know, learning how to trade, how I trade on my own, shorting on my own, you know, that those, those moments like that clarify for me because that's all you can do, but the skill, you can't take that away. The, the 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 money you can't touch that you feel me 
You can't, you can't do that. There's nothing you can do. I don't want, no, 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 Bond. I'm not going to, I'm just, I just want to let people know why it's so important. You know, when you become a trader, you become an IBO, an independent business owner. You feel me? Your money can't be fucked with. Your money can't be fucked with. 702, you're on the air. It's your boy, Bond, man. So, so like I was saying, man, I, can get, I don't give a two fucks what these people think. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Think about it. I mean, first of all, I mean, I wasn't born in this country anyway. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I'm not used to that anyway. But the bottom line, like I said, is that if words can hurt, if, if words can hurt people, then one has to question, you know, their, their, their own self-confidence and you know, their, their, their own self-worth. Yeah. Uh, I, I, really, I really don't even pay attention to that shit. I'm like, whatever, nigga. I mean, I hear people say all the time, and I see, I see when a lot of brothers, you know, you know, they get all the fights over that word. I'm like, yeah. yes. But don't speak what they got to speak. And no, move yeah, on, yeah, you know? can't do nothing to me. If, as long as you don't, don't touch my money, you, we all exactly. good. Yeah, we all exactly. good. Exactly. Exactly. So that's, that's why, you know, I, I, I'll be more offended by someone messing, like I said, messing with your money yeah. than someone calling me a nigga because yeah. I couldn't give a rat ass. Right. I'm saying, end of the end of the day, I'm gonna make my stack. Hey, who cares? You know what I'm saying? There you go. Thank you for the call, man. All right, man. All right. Yeah, man. I get that all day. Shit, I get that all day. I get that all day. When I came on the internet promoting stocks and shit like that, man, that that was every 20 minutes on the video. You know what I'm saying? Every 20 minutes. But you got to use that as motivation. So I, I want you guys to see out here. There, there are people out here who that's how they feel about, you know, certain people out here talking about getting money. You, you, you are not the complexion to be talking about, you know, these kind of things. So that's what I'm going to call you to make you feel that way. But the best thing you can do is to keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, you know, and stay with the people who support you. You know, and that's what we're gonna keep doing, guys. Let's just keep, let's get back at it. Let's get back at it. Um. Now, before we were rudely interrupted, I did want to talk about. Um. Uh, yeah, I thought that could be back as support, but it's not. Um. Uh, Let me see here. That was a nice. Looking for a good. Another good. Stock that made a good move today. Mm -mm -mm. What happened to this uh, one that you guys said Tim Sykes likes so much that hasn't done anything recently? SKLN. You know, that hasn't done anything recently. That hasn't done anything recently. SKLN. Uh, IMNP. I know, Mr. Lloyd, you had said that you had gotten into IMNP. I had to bring that back up because, man, that's that's been a, in a, a that's that's been doing really really well. So I don't know if you're still on the air listening, but IMNP found some support at 26. We're at 28 now. So could this be an opportunity where I M N P but the only problem is that resistance is at thirty in that stock. You know, that's just four days ago. Just four days ago, you know, the stock couldn't break thirty. In fact it, it tried to break it two times. One time on the twenty third and then the next time on the twenty sixth. And it couldn't break thirty. So is I M N P you know, finally going to break 30. You know, and that's another stock that, that just, you know, hasn't really gotten its act together recently. Been very, very bearish since the beginning of August. All right. This was a stock that we used to talk about. This was a stock that we used to really talk about. Don't talk about it no more. Don't talk about it no more. Yeah, yeah, Tim Tim ain't talking about SKLN anymore. There were people coming here saying Tim really likes it. Tim really likes it. Ain't nobody talking about it, though. 
Ain't nobody talking about it. Uh, Carl Gotch, you say, what's my marijuana play? It's been MJNA, but MJNA, you know, it, it does. It's been looking a little, a little diluted. It's been looking a little diluted. Uh, so I really like CVSI a lot. I'm a big fan of CVSI. It's another stock that I've been pushing here on the show. Uh, I haven't really probably gone as hard on Twitter about it as, as you, but CVSI, again, a company that has a really good outreach. Uh, they used to go by the name Canavest. That, that, that might bring back some memories for you. Canavest was a stock that was, was heavily promoted. Um, now they go as, as CVSI. And uh, they they are a cannabis oil wholesaler uh, sales. I mean, they, they, they do anything from their website. And I'll post the website again in the chat room, and you guys can see how well put together this company is. Okay. And, again, that's the ticker CVSI. Yes, it's, it's not, not as much, nowhere near as much debt as MGNA. MGNA has been around a lot longer. All right. It's been around a lot longer. But CVSI, I think, is is finding its its legs here and could be breaking out soon. Uh, but I like what it's been doing so far these last couple trading days. CVSI, uh, it was an opportunity for some people to get in at, at some you know pretty cheap prices uh, for the stock. Volume, you know, still you know over that a quarter of a million, so still not crazy, not crazy. But uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see, but CVSI, check out the website. They they sell the cannabis oil that people swear by. You know, you can go and find videos on YouTube where there are people who say that cannabis oil, you know, cures their seizures, it cures, you know, their wrinkles, and, and it just helps with so many ailments with the body. And I, I think they're, you know, I'm not a, a natural cures kind of freak, but I do believe that there are things, you know, that do offer natural cures out here that the powers that be don't want people to know really about them. I'm not saying that they can heal things like cancer or, or things like that, which I believe honestly are, 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 are you know, uh, created by, you know, what we put in, in, you know, our meats and things like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I think there could be some, you know, some healing properties there to an extent. Yes, indeed, to an extent. Uh, NV, yeah, NAVB. Yeah, you know, NAVB was really interesting because we had said these these next two days are going to be very, very important for the stock. And, you know, for the most part, the stock hasn't done anything. You know, hasn't really done anything. So NAVB looking like, you know, I don't know if it's running out of steam or what. The average volume is 2.2 million today. 480,000. So, you know, what, what's going on here? You know, what's going on here? NAVB was supposed to be that runner for September. Now it looks like it's running out of steam. You know? I I, 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 I still like it, though, Bond. I know you're still a big fan of NAVB. I know you're still a big fan of NAVB. And I, I, I think it could get back to what it, what it used to be. I think we could be looking at a stock that can be rallying back to 150, you know, touching 150 again. But I understand that when we look at the stock, you know, spread the chart out a little bit more, look, it's kind of bearish. All right. It's very, very bearish. When you look at the chart spread out a little bit more, it's almost like a descending triangle where you can kind of, you know, you might have to play with the angle of the triangle, but you know, it looks like for whatever reason, it's it's unable to break through some of these levels here, where you can almost kind of line them down with the with a good line all the way down. You know, so the chart, if you spread the chart out too far, you know, you might think it's it, you know we could be looking at even lower prices in NAVB. We could be looking at even lower prices. You know, you're saying the stock is waiting on news. Okay, well, hopefully we get that news pretty soon. Hopefully we get that news pretty soon.
hopefully we get that news pretty soon. Okay. Let me see here. Um, let me see what's being pushed out here recently. 702, you're on the air. Yeah, so, so, so that NABB, man, that NABB right now, like I said, is in a holding position right now. Because, I mean, I, it, it, we need to turn on the volume on the air real quick here. But, hey, James, so, so, get so, closer so, to the uh, get closer to the phone yeah, if you can. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm here, man. So I was saying, they're in a hold position right now. I mean, that's, that's more than obvious. I mean, the stock has been going between 88 and the dollar and for, for, mm-hmm. forever now. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it, like I said, is that, you know, they had to settle that court issue they have. That's this um, loan issue they have. I think it was a 50, $55 million whether they had to make a payment. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they mentioned they mentioned they're going to make a payment on that. You know, they're going to get the, um, the money from Cardinal to pay down that, that um, obligation. Mm-hmm. Now, once that's signed, which I think is in the process of getting signed, stock is going to go crazy. And the thing about it, like I said, is that 88, 88 million was just initial. I think it's something up to 3 and 10 million. And I mean, as, as far as having to, to give Cardinal the, the rights to the actual, you know, the product, whatever the case is. Okay. So like I said, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I, actually, I'm pretty long on NAV, NAVB. I'm long on it. Because like I said, it, the stock has been, if you look at the past two weeks, Stock has not go, gone below eighty eight cents. You know what I'm saying? It's just it sells from eighty eight cents, and it, if anything, it's gone up. It's gone up to a dollar several times. And so there's something there's something that's propping it up. You know, something's propping it up, and I think it's because they're waiting on this news to come out. And when it, once it does come up, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be anybody guess. But I think it's going to be going to be huge. You know, and, and I don't know. I'm just going to tell people enough. You know. The NABB man, you got legs. Now, this is a stock that you think that uh, I I saw you in the text uh, talk in the chat talk about hold. So you believe that mm-hmm. this is a stock that you you know you might have to wait on it for about a month or two then. But not even a month. I think I'm guessing because like I said right now they there's an article that came out and said that people at um, NABB was basically working to get this deal done mm-hmm. with, with, um, with with Cardinal. You know, and it's not a small deal. I mean, this, this deal has to do with Europe. It has to do with hair. You know what I'm saying? And what happened is, is they're essentially giving Carnal access to use their use their their, their 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 device and stuff like that. So by them doing so, they get they get a royalty from that, and they can still they can still um any can still um promote the product on top of that. So it's a win win all the way to look at it. Now the thing about like I said is that. I have a real, I have a real strong sense when it comes to stocks. Like I said, I can, I can look at a stock, and people say, "Well, you know, you, you, you know, I'm doing technicals." But like I said, I'm mean, all strictly fundamentals. I mean, I do a lot of reading, I do a lot of due diligence. I'm looking at SEC filings. I, look, I mean, I'm constantly looking at stuff like for hours. I mean, when you and I get to the phone tonight, I'm on, the, I'm on, I'm on the computer for like three, four hours afterwards. You know, I mean, doing my doing due diligence. Mm. But the bottom line, like I said, is that when you look at that stock, watch how it's been trading. You know. If anything was, if it was something negative, if people thought it was negative, the stock would have fell by now. It would have went back to 40 cents. Hmm. But it's been, what, two weeks now? It's been held over 88 cents. Mm-hmm. And and it's it soft and it costs a dollar and change, whatever the case is. It's going gonna, gonna to run. And today, like I said, it's like 92 cents. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I definitely think something about to happen there. But like I said, you know, those those who those who don't have patience won't make any money in the stock. And they've got to have patience, you know what I'm saying? I mean, bottom line. There you go. Appreciate That's it, man. It. Thanks for the call. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, you know, James Bond is this doubling down and saying that NAVB is one to, you know, be a little bit patient on. Be a little bit patient on. So, you know, look, it hasn't, it hasn't you know, we watched NAVB as it kind of ran from like 85 to like 105. And it's it's cooled down since. Uh, it's cooled down since, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, it was a very impressive story to start off the month. You know, this is a stock that kind of just came out of nowhere after a recent drop. You know, it was down there with the le- same level as the Gales and the PTXs of the world. Speaking of Gale, Gale ran today. That was really interesting. And Gale, Gale again is one of those stocks that we. We thought we it was on bounce watch, but that bounce never came. In fact, it ended up giving way 
in the 50s to come down lower. Now it's uh, touched as low as 27. Touched as low as 27. And, um, you know, ran today two cents, you know, for 6%. Uh, whether, you know, this probably isn't the beginning of anything. I do still see a lot of bearish momentum for Gale. But again, Gale's another another pharmaceutical company that, that unfortunately had a drug miss. Unfortunately had a drug miss. And speaking about drug missing, THLD had, this, that had a drug miss today. You know, but for those, again, we played that, that move beautifully today. Uh, dropped into the 50s. All right, and pretty much ran from there. Pretty much ran from there. In fact, if you bought THLD this morning after the drop, you 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 ended up you know almost ten twelve cents higher for the day. All right, those 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 are just gimmies, man. Those are just really just gimmies when we talk about THLD. Those are really gimmies. Uh, AMPE. Uh, A-M-P-E, Ampio. I, I haven't heard of Ampio in a long time. I haven't heard of Ampio in a long time, so let me know where, where what's been going on with it. I have not heard of Ampio in a very long time. Uh, Ampio, again, is another company that, that uh, back in July had a miss. Back in July. I don't, I, I don't, was it a drug failure or... A suspension or something like that, but anyway, Ampio, Ampio was was a three dollar, what was that? Yeah, three dollar. Yeah, it was a almost four. Yeah, it was a four dollar pharmaceutical company dropped down into the one twenties. Actually, dropped down to about eighty nine cent. Ran that back up to the one forties, and pretty much you know has been living in the shithole ever since. You know. Uh, BAS, yeah, BAS is one of those stocks that that has a tendency to spike a lot. Actually, has a tendency to spike a lot. But the, I mean, BAS is in the gutters. You know, just so heavy though. I mean, but I mean, shout out to the people who can play BAS. I mean, look where it started September and look where it is now. You're up a hundred percent in BAS. Actually, you're up about hundred and hundred and two percent. And BAS from this from the first of September, right? You're at thirty seven cents now. You're at what eighty two cent now? You know what I'm saying? You're you're at a, a hundred plus, a hundred plus, a hundred plus. Yes, indeed. What's going on? Stocks and heels. There we go. Congrats on that buy here, pay here. PTN. Okay, Michael Greer. You like PTN for long term? Now, PTN, Michael Greer, are you talking about for for this week or for the next couple of days? I see that's what people want to know now. If I'm going to put my money in PTN, how long am I going to put it in for? How long do you expect me to keep my money in PTN to where I can experience the kind of gains that you think it's going to be coming to the stock? Uh, you know, I haven't been a big fan of this. Let me see, NBFT. You know, I, I remember, I don't, I'm sure you guys here remember when I was talking about this, uh, this, this Nabu Fit program, this Nabu Fit program, the stock was up 12 12 percent today very lightly traded I, I wouldn't even touch it now i wouldn't touch it now kind of reminds me a little bit of nvfy but you know this is an otc play uh this is another stock um if you guys remember i was talking about how they got this soccer player to push the you know the, you know to push the company they got this soccer player from brazil and you know he's really popular in the country nabu fit global Ticker is NBFT, very lightly traded. I won't jump on it now. I won't say go go you know go buy it. I'm I'm just saying that 
they got the Neymar is, is a football player from Brazil called Neymar. He's if you know soccer, you know who Neymar is. He's just you know one of the best soccer players in the world right now, and uh, he's pushing this this Nabu Fit stuff. And uh, but the promotion really hasn't gotten off the ground just yet. They may have found some support here at at uh, at seventy five cents. They may have found some support here finally at seventy five cents, which was just two days ago. Which was just two days ago. The stock was at seventy five cents. Now it's at a dollar twenty five. So we'll see maybe if uh, this could be the beginning of something there. But you know, I I, I never you, you when it comes to a promo, you never can be too sure where you think it's going to go we've seen promotions go from 50 cents to six dollars i mean I've, I've you know it's crazy how far some of these things can go when all the right things fall into place all the right things fall into place nbft again very lightly traded but you know the fact that the stock is up almost 100 percent in two days alone is something to be very very uh interested in okay they put out news a couple of days ago that they had reached a hundred thousand downloads so you know things are growing things are growing over there we'll see what happens with the stock yeah we talked about AUPH AUPH is doing its own thing I mean uh, AUPH big gains today gave gave you know gave it back for the most part uh, after about noon or so all right after about you know yeah after by really three o'clock or so kind of gave it all back but uh, AUPH I would I would look for the breakout in AUPH on Monday on Monday look for some some you know some gains in AUPH based on this price based on this price you might you might see the stock move uh, a little bit higher there but this was a stock that was in the 370s so Shout out to the people who rode it all the way up there. And I feel really sorry for if you bought it up there and you're, you're stuck up there. Because it may not be going back to 370 for a while. For a while. Okay. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Sprint next week. Yeah, I mean, I'll, look. Sprint, both of our favorite stocks did really well today, uh, Sinclair. Sprint and AMD uh, both did very, very well. I mean, again, if you the type of person look looking for, you know, Sprint sideways, actually. Sprint sideways, but, you know, um, but AMD did its thing. I just thought it would stay over 7, but it didn't stay over 7, came back down. But, look, you know, sideways day for Sprint after running for, you know, a couple consecutive days there. Uh, you know, but Sprint, Sprint was actually green until the last, like, you know, hour of the day or so. Yeah, last, like, hour of the day. That's why I checked on it. It was actually higher, uh, for the day. In fact, yeah, yeah, Sprint was a lot higher. In fact, if you look at the day's range, if you look at the day's range, Sprint got up to 672. So, Sprint was actually in the green quite a bit, but things turned around toward the end of the day. And that's just, you know how the market is sometimes okay yeah EAC EAC again is the stock that it's called Ericsson and I keep thinking Ericsson the mobile phone company Ericsson is gone long gone but uh, you know they're an aircraft manufacturing business 81% uh, today this was a stock that was you know RIP and come to find out uh, what what moved the stock really like this? What really moved it? I honestly can't even tell you what really moved the stock in 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 EAC today. You know, eighty one percent is just sick. In fact, it was actually a lot higher. It was it was it was up significantly more than that. It opened at thirty seven, got to a high of ninety six cents. So it was actually a hundred plus. 100 plus and look this this is an, a, a small company by the way too 809 employees okay just you know not much going on with the stock too though I mean it was pretty much dead for weeks it was dead for weeks all right 
in about two weeks, the stock was pretty much dead. So it, it needed that. Contract extension, okay. Appreciate that, Travi. Two-year contract is there and the send trading. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I mean, EAC doing its thing today. Another company that, that spiked from the morning. You know, this was a situation where looking at the chart, again, I didn't look at this company, but if I just take at what the chart did today, uh, this was an opportunity that, you know, maybe if, if you got in, you made money pretty much throughout the whole day. In fact, you you know, you this was an opportunity that anybody really could have gotten it because I, mean, I can see even at 11 o'clock, even at 11 o'clock, you were still at what? Uh, even at 11 o'clock, you were still at what, 45 cents? You were at 45 cents, and it even came back down a little bit. And the money didn't really come in until after 2. Then you really spiked up there and got up to 96, 96 cents. So for those people who got in even after 10, 10.30, 11 o'clock, they doubled their money in the afternoon. And therein lies the power of penny stocks, ladies and gentlemen. Therein lies the power. Ascent Trading, you said you got in on a low float scan at 57. There you go. There you go. Therein lies the power. Therein lies the power. I got a couple of tweets of, let me see here. I know it's a penny. Yeah, I didn't think so. A couple of people tweeted me about G G A H C and O T C bullshit play. Uh, look at look at all that. Look at that. Five million shares traded and zero put up nothing. Put up nothing. No gain. No decline. Nothing. You know when you want to talk about a liquid. You know what a joke. Five oh one. You're on the air. Hey Sal, this is Bill. What's going on, Bill? Is Bill Betts? Yes, sir. Hey, Bill, I think this is the first time caller, man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Betts on the line. Shout out to you, Bill. Thanks for calling, man. Hey, love the show, man. I'm, uh, I want to talk about OWCP. Okay. Now, OWCP, I did tweet cannabis. about this, this, this company. This is a cannabis play. Tell us a little bit about it. Why do you like it? Uh, my scanner picked it up uh, Tuesday, maybe, mm -hmm. for like suspicious activity, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, 0032, I got in at 0038 mm. uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, and look where it's at today. Yes, indeed. Let me let me see what that gain is. By the way, you got an 0038. Where are we at now? Yeah, that's um, oh, oh, one, oh, something. Oh, one, oh, eight. That's a 184% gain. I just want to alert you that this may go to two cents. Uh-oh. Now, now, why do you so, feel so uh, confidently that this is going to keep going? Because obviously, like you, right, like you, there's some people in the stock who've, who've gotten that, you know, those kind of Okay, returns. yeah, so, oh, yeah, I'm not, okay, so, yeah. I can't say everybody jump on this. Okay. I'm in it. Um, the history, if you look back, mm -hmm. this stock likes O2. Mm -hmm. After O2, it goes back down. Okay. And so that's all I'm really going on. Okay. I mean, it, 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 for the last two days, it's been absolutely beautiful. I mean, you, I don't think you yeah. can ask for a better... You know, two day play again. This is again. We just talked about the power of penny stocks. Look at that, one hundred and eighty four percent bill bets in two days. This is insane. And so my 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 strategy is all I all I do is I get in and out for thirty percent on everything I do. Mm -hmm. But on this, I did sell half. I did sell half, and I got the other half riding. Okay. Now, now, Bill, when it comes to, you know, like OTC penny plays, I have this thing where I don't like to put in like more than a thousand. I will never go in typically never more than a thousand, you know, even if I'm pushing it myself. When it comes to like for you, what do you feel like is, is, is should be like the average amount somebody should be one or, or, or wanting to play with? Um, when you're talking about zero, 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 one stock. I like to stay around a million shares. Mm -hmm. 
if you get into the OO, the double O's, I like to say 500,000. So a couple know, hundred bucks. There. So a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. You, 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 yeah, you like anywhere between two, like $250 to what? About 700, 800 five. bucks to 500? Maybe okay. five. Okay. Yeah, about five. Okay. And that's about it. Okay. So, but I just wanted to let you know that to keep an eye on that for Monday. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Betts putting his two cents in. I hope you become a regular caller, Bill. I really appreciate your, you know, alerts during the day. Yeah, I, I figure I, I want to. I want to let you know about this one. To you know, just to watch it for Monday. Yes, indeed. O W C. All right, all right. Thank you, Sal. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call, Bill. All uh, right. Later. All right. There it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Betts. Calling up. Bill Bill is a little bit of a secretive guy. <laughs> Always hit me up through mostly Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, so I've, I've, I've been trying to get him to call up. And, uh, you know, shout out to Bill Betts sneaking in with the call there. Sneaking in with the call. But Bill Betts putting his two cents in. OWCP is his call to go to two cents. So, Bill, if it gets to two... If it gets to two, you got to call in. You got to call in again. And this would be absolutely incredible if it gets to two. And, again, that will be another, uh, you know, another huge, huge gain uh, for anybody who's, you know, been in the stock. Again, he's, he's been at 0038. If it got to just two cents, I mean, that's, that's insane. That's a 426% return, and that would be in uh, – in as little as four trading days, that would be as little as four trading days, and that's and that's what you know when we talk about five hundred bucks, three hundred, five hundred bucks, you know you could put something like that in a penny stock. That's the kind of returns, and these you know and these people you know they shit on these double O, and I know JJ doesn't like these double O, triple O, zero, but you can make some good money. You can get some really good money on these plays, man. Okay, and you don't need a lot to start with. Now the only problem is that, for, you know, unfortunately the the brokers right now, you got to go through TD or you got to go through E Trade. But the returns justify the cost of the trades. All right, so you know if if, if the trade of course works for you, if the trade works for you, but if you can take five hundred dollars and you're going to gain four hundred, five hundred percent, what the hell is that ten dollars? Uh, you know, to you know to make the deal. You know, what is ten dollars to make the deal? Um Stocks and Heels is talking about a uh, a stock you want to sit in right now, man. Uh that's gotta be it's gotta be ATLS. You know, ATLS, if if there was one stock right now that somebody says, Sal, what can I just if I were to give you ten G's, right? And I would just, just, I wanted you to put it in the stock and just let's let's freaking go to what's that movie with you know Sylvester Stallone? They put him in that damn little uh, ice box or whatever, and they freeze him and send him into the future. If if we had like, you know, if we got frozen for like sixty days, right? And 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 we came out of this damn box. What what stock do you think would make money on? It would be ATLS. ATLS. All right, ATLS, a company that again pre-bankruptcy, pre-bankruptcy, right? Again, they got into bankruptcy not 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 really a fault a fault of their own. It was really about that macroeconomic pull of crashing oil prices. ATLS was a situation where the company was growing rapidly. Again, you know, you can look back on a chart. You know, go go look at the chart. You know, ATLS, uh, just before, you know, oil prices started crashing in, in late 2014, the stock was at $14 a share. Now, August 2014, the, the Saudis, the Middle East people start throwing out oil. We had the situation with Syria. That's where I was the beginning of Syria. The, the ISIS people dumping oil out there, just the whole, you know, Syria went offline, right? So oil collapsed. The price of oil collapsed, right? And and 
the company obviously had, you know, overextended itself based on high prices of oil. As the price of oil continued to collapse throughout 2015 and into early 2016, like about January, the company by then had become, you know, struggling and, and insolvent. And they declared, they declared for bankruptcy. Well, recently, ATLS has emerged from bankruptcy. And unlike so many other companies, ATLS saved their shareholders. And now they are rewarding right, their shareholders by these incredible gains that we've been seeing day in and day out. Now, a couple days ago, you can see that decline in the chart. You had a situation where a large shareholder was indicted by the SEC for insider trading based on the fact that he knew some information that that you know the company was really going to survive and move on and he played it which was what anybody listening to my voice right now would do if you got that info all right and they're not going to do anything but slap him on the wrist he's going to have to pay cut a check and then go on with the rest of his life and still trade and do what he does at the end of the day, that's all the SEC does when you insider trade, all right, at that level. I mean, I mean, if you're a CEO or something like that, you go to jail. But, you know, if you're just a guy who got the hookup, nine times out of ten, they just ask you to cut the check, okay? But ATLS would be that stock, would be that stock, okay? Demolition Man. Thank you, Barry Parker, bad scientist. That is the yeah, Demolition Man. That's a pretty decent movie, too. Good little action movie, too. Yeah, somebody in here actually talking about MGT. MGT is the biggest damn scam out there. Please, MGT, just, ugh. Leave that stock alone. I mean, how many burned people? How many, how many more people can get burned in MGT? Now we're treading up at two, ready to crack to go lower. You know, ready to crack the gold lower. Oh, yeah, I got the 40 tonight. Yeah, somebody told me to, 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 to use this Miller, but it's too watered down, man. It's too watered down. Miller, I, I, I should have went with the, the Colt 45, man. The Miller High Life is, I don't know how people go to the football games and tailgate and get drunk off this because this is not hitting, man. This is not hitting. This is not hitting at all. By now, Colt 45, it already had me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it had me a little bit feeling some kind of way. But this ain't hitting. This ain't hitting. Uh, ALTS? Was that a stock? ALTS? 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 Okay, that's a that's a that's a pro share. Okay, that's an ETF. And, and you know, that's, it's not very traded either. There are people who trade ETFs too, by the way. I, I do want to talk about ETFs a little bit. There are people who trade ETFs. Um, when I made that video about TradingView, I started the video with, with USO because there are people who specifically trade USO. You know, USO is one of those stocks that moves crazy intraday. Okay, and, and it moves, you know, every, it, it moves very aggressively. For example, if you look at the USO chart, uh, USO has gone from here, the 27th, to where it is now, 90, 94 cents, right? Practically, what, 82 cents in three days. 82 cents a share in three days. You know, so there, there are some ETFs that are very popular, you know, excuse me, not popular, heavily traded. A lot of heavily traded ETFs that people trade, but you got to understand the, you know, again, those pulls behind it, the price of oil, you know, making sure you understand, uh, you know, what Fed rates are doing and stuff like that. So you got to kind of be able to pay attention to those things. But there are people who, who trade ETFs. Yes, indeed. Who trade ETFs. Yeah. Yeah, mo yeah, Momo mo Milk. Yeah, there are people who trade options on. Yes, you're, it is correct. You can buy options on ETFs as well. That is true. That is true. Many uh, many uh, ETFs uh, have options available. 
Uh, Steel Brewing Company, 8% uh, via Steel Brewing Co I got to look that up. Steel Brewing Company. Never heard of it. Okay. They got a ticker, Bats? Uh, D-U-S-T. I've seen these tickers before. I think you. I think you've been the one who brought it up. Uh, D U S T Dutz. Okay, yeah, these are the ETFs. Yeah, thank you for this. Appreciate it. These are heavily traded ETFs. Thank you so much, Recon Force. Um, uh, that people trade. That people trade intraday. They trade them like stocks. And, you know, these are, you know, people sitting on a couple M's. They trade these 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 big plays. And they, they go in and out. They'll go in and out just like me and you go through in these penny stocks. And they'll go in and out with them in, with, you know, 100,000, 200,000 share positions. You know, like, like nothing. Like nothing. Okay. You know, there's a Twitter, there's an account on Twitter I like to follow, Block Alerts. Block Alerts is a really, really good Twitter account to, to follow. And you'll see people who go in the market and they'll buy 500,000 shares of a, of a $100, $200 stock. And you're like, damn, somebody really got that kind of money? But yes, yes, somebody got that kind of money to drop 500, dollars $750,000 on 750,000 shares, excuse me, on a on a, a 100 or 200 300 dollar stock. You know? Yes indeed. Okay, Travi, definitely. Uh FAS. Yeah, F FAS, that's a, that's another one. Yeah, FAS is another one. Uh, now FAS, this is the one that tracks the finance. Okay, financials, right? This is the one that track tracks like the Goldman Sachs's of the world and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I think this is the one. And you know these leverage, you know ETFs. You gotta do your you know your homework on there. And there are videos, some guys who can give you more info on 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 them. You know. There, you know, there are guys who can who can inform you on more on those. Get me some Ciroc. Yeah, okay, next yeah, next Friday I'll do the Ciroc. I'll do the Ciroc. I've been really trying to uh, join uh uh Young Money or Cash Money, whatever they want to call themselves now. I don't I don't think Young Money exists anymore cuz I ain't heard them repping Young Money. I have, have you heard anybody say Young Money late? I have not heard one of those dudes say Young Money in at least like a year and a half. You know? But anyway, I've been trying to get with that GTV. I've been trying to get with that GTV. And, um, I, I, you know, when I saw that bottle, I just thought it was so stupid. You know, because Diddy has Ciroc, uh, Ross has Belvedere, uh, 50 has, I forgot what 50's put, and then here he comes with GTV. I just thought it was so retarded, like GTV, what type of shit? I can't see myself in a club walking in with no damn GTV bottle, but some people say it's actually good. F and vodka, yeah, there you go. F and Vodka, which is kind of a funny name, but, you know, yeah, it sounds like a, like a low budget, you know, commercial you get in that, that, that seventy nine ninety nine package, you know, it's GTV, what the fuck is that, like, nah, I'm good, homie, I'm good, you know, yeah, so I think they need to change the name to something a little bit more. You know, a little more classy, man. GTV. Yeah, yeah. Henny still does the trick. Henny still does the trick. I wish, I wish, I wish Ciroc, uh, Ciroc was owned by a publicly traded company. 
I'm surprised they haven't bought Diddy out of that yet. I'm surprised somebody hasn't came out and bought Diddy out of that. You know what I'm saying? 50 Cent was in vitamin water for like a year. You guys remember when uh, vitamin water was in that game? He, I mean, he was in the game for uh, Get Rich or Die Trying on, on, on PlayStation. I had that game, 50 Cent. Get Rich or Die Trying. That was the shit, man. That was a good-ass game, too. For those of you guys who had that game, that was a good-ass game. Get Rich or Die Trying for PlayStation. Yeah, Grand Touring Vodka. Yeah, I, th I just think it's retarded. I just think it's retarded. Mm. Somebody had uh, hit me up to to go to uh, Atlanta this weekend, and there's a new strip club called V Live. Is it is it up? V Live Atlanta. I don't know when it's. I don't know if it's just. V Live Atlanta. And uh, supposedly it just recently opened up, you know, not too long ago. And it's basically taken over. It's basically taken over. And, uh, you know, King of Diamonds, which, which was the premier place in Atlanta, which, by the way, if you've ever been to King of Diamonds in Atlanta... I thought it was small as hell, man. I I, I don't know what I, I everybody talked about King of Diamonds in Atlanta. I thought I would walk into this like you know huge like, you know, where VIP space and you know, and I go in there it's like a hole in the wall, man. I'm like, this is King of Diamonds? I wasn't even really like impressed. You know? Those the King of Diamonds in Miami shits on the one in Atlanta, man. The one in Miami shits on 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 on, on the one in uh, yeah Magic City. Excuse me, Magic City. Magic City. It shits on the one in uh, in uh, in Atlanta. King of Diamonds shits on Magic City in Atlanta. You know. Yes, indeed. It's a joke. But, but, Atlanta got the best looking women, though. Atlanta got the best looking women. The best looking women are in the A, though. Best looking women are in the A, for sure. For sure. Uh, they all cornbread fed. Uh, best game was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Okay. I guess you were into those racing games. Black China used to dance there. Okay. You know, Black China stepped that pussy up, man. She went and got herself a Kardashian. But everybody think that's a big come up. But, Car you know, Rob don't really got money like that, though. Rob Kardashian ain't rich. Is the He's rich because he's affiliated with the Kardashian family and his, you know, his sisters ain't never going to let him go broke. But he himself personally, he ain't really got it like that. Rob Kardashian ain't got no businesses. He don't really got no no shit out here moving like that, man. He, ain't, he, he don't rap. He don't dance. He don't model. He don't got no product. You know. But, you know, she, look, she know, you know, you know, women like that are, I don't know if the word gold digger is appropriate because she didn't even really make a gold digger move. She just found a way to kind of stay in the light. You know what I'm saying? She just stayed in the light. She's just one of those type of people who like to be in the limelight. And after the Kardashian, uh, after what's her name? Stop fucking with her. Chloe stopped fucking with her. 
She was like, fuck it, I'll, I'll date y'all brother just to stay close to y'all, man. I'll, I'll date your brother just to stay close to y'all. You know? Yeah, yeah, she got the little, the, the channel on E or whatever. You know? And Tiger, Tiger was, I used to call him Tigger for a long time. I thought his name was Tigger. I didn't even know it was Tiger. So he goes by Tiger T. Raw. I don't know what he wants to be called. You know? I used to call him Tigger for a long time. And he's a pretty good rapper. He's a decent rapper. He's a decent rapper. Used to fuck with another. That's another old cash money dude. And Tig uh, Tiger is really interesting because he rolled out of cash money quietly. He was like, man, this shit ain't, ain't, you niggas ain't doing shit for me. I'm out of here. Went out and did his own thing. So I, I, I think Tiger, you know, give that guy some credit where it's due. Yeah, I did like the Metal Gear series too. Oh, LK Ra, that's you? Yeah, call up, LK Ra. Call back up, man. You know, when I see that unknown number, I'm like, man, who the fuck is this? You know? I, I didn't know it was you. Yeah, when I see an unknown number, I'm not sure who that could be. Okay. Uh, so we had somebody in the chat room talk about INVT, and INVT is ironically being promoted. And sometimes you want to see what's being promoted, you can always go to stockpromoters.com. And uh, on the side there, they'll show you all the most promoted stocks are right now. And uh, ORRP is, is another stock that's really being promoted heavily. Birdman. Man, look, you can say what you want about Birdman, but that dude get money, man. That's an ugly-ass motherfucker, man. No homo. You know what I'm saying? Not trying to judge the dude. But Birdman, any black motherfucker that could put a red dot on top of his head and still pull up in a Bentley... And, and, and attract beautiful women Shouts out to you homie Shouts out to you LK Rob What's good man Yo what's the deal fam yeah, What's the man. deal You live on the air what's good Well you know I'm just clocking out of the plantation 11.30 at night Yes indeed I'm saying, Just wanted to get some things off my chest Yes indeed Uh I see you there drinking on that 40, man. You need to get off that, man. Get you a Heineken or something. I'm going to just start there. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But anyway, man, I ain't call you about that, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to call and talk about some stocks, but I don't know what y'all talking about really right now. I mean, I'm at work. I'm just trying to read the comments, but I can't really get a feel for what y'all really talking about. Uh, the last thing I, I really heard was people trying to get on bond or maybe, maybe I misheard it or misread it. Yeah. About a bad cop pick yeah. that people talking about what good trade is, bad trade is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, follow your own trades. I mean, I I, I, I be cheating that work shit. Fuck work. Well, hey, 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 yeah, I mean, do what but, you gotta do. But what's your point of view? I'm saying. Well, my my point of view on this man that, that honestly, anybody and everybody can tell you what a good trade is, but I mean, at, at, end, at the end of the day, nothing is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, you could be the best trader in the world and make the wrong pick, and the wrong move, or lose all your damn money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it, it, it's just what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just what it is. I ain't nobody commenting on. I ain't the best trader in the world myself. So I, I'm still learning. I'm trying to get out of that uh, investing, investing to actually being a trader. Because okay. I actually have some good picks. A lot of my picks ran like GGB. That shit was running. Yes. It ran all the, it ran all the way to three fifteen. Three sixteen, three seventeen, something like that. And if I was looking at it for a trading point of view, I would have got out of the shit at three ten. Mm. But I'm used but I'm used to like investing. Because that's why I started. So I'm in there at three ten, it goes to three three dollars, I take profits, it goes back down, I get back in, it goes up, I'm like, well cool, I'm just gonna ride it out. And that's when it went back down to two fifty, and I was pissed because I gave everything back. Yeah. yeah. So, 
So when I did that, I know I told you the story before, but I took it on another level. Though. I, I had to take some time to reflect on what I did wrong. Mm. So I, I pretty much cleared out my E-Trade account on, on uh, GGB. Just for that one trade. That's how, that's how pissed off I was. So, 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 so moving forward, what I mean, what are you looking at now? What what stock is, is, is you know right on your radar right now? I mean, right now, any and every stock. I mean, my, my main focus is on Apple. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm betting on, on earnings for Apple, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm really taking a break. I'm gonna start I'm looking at stocks probably over the weekend, and I probably get back into something probably Wednesday next week. But right now, I'm just going to take a mental break because I've been looking at this shit from like 8.30, 8.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then about 12, I go to work. I'm looking at it at work. I get off work. I'm listening to this. Sure. I'm looking at stuff. I'm like, let me, let me just take a break, man, because um, apparently I'm doing something wrong. And GGB kind of proved that to me that I'm doing something wrong. Okay. Um, so I've been just getting on the fundamentals of it. Like, what should I really do? How should I really approach this game? Right. That I kind of... I was so excited with Apple, all the money I gained. I'm looking at GGP, I'm looking at the fall. Then I'm looking at my account at the end of the week. I'm like, how the fuck did I break even? Yeah. Oh, hell, hell no. You know, you know how much money I made in Apple? And how much money I lost in GGP? Mm. Now, I'm, like, I, 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 I'm curious to know because, I mean, what brought up yeah. GGB? You know, because I remember Jay talking about this stock. So, what? what? Oh, no, I, I, actually, I, I, actually, I broke it up. You know what I'm saying? I was just talking. I actually brought it up. I didn't even listen to what Jay said. Okay. I was just looking at stocks. I, I just got an eye for stocks, man. Mm -hmm. I, I just got an eye for it. So I just look at the chart, and I said, all right, this is a cool chart. I put it in my scanner. I put it in my watch list and just let it sit. Mm -hmm. So I just got a whole lot of stocks in my watch list, and then I was just uh, getting, getting some good uh, feedbacks about earnings, and that's what it was like at 250 originally. Okay. And it kept going up and kept going up. I said, you know what? Let me get in at 270. Let me put a couple of racks in this thing and let the thing ride out. Mm. And I'm, I'm feeling good about myself. And, until, I, until I fuck it up at the end. <laughs> there you go. I mean, yeah. I, I'm saying so. I just got an Apple stock. Now, when I look at stocks, I think you probably got a different point of view than me. But I, I don't look at fundamentals. I don't care about the business. I don't care how quick the business is running. Oh, you, you, there you go. You and Treasure Hunter got a lot in common, man. A lot in common doing okay. that. Yeah, but, but, but my, my picks be good. It's just that I, I fumble at the end. Because mm -hmm. I'm used to being an investor and not a trader. Mm -hmm. And being a trader is completely different. Because if I would have set my stock gap to stay disciplined and stay with it, when DGB hit 299 I would have got out. But I was thinking like an investor that I removed my damn stock gap after I took profit the first time, thinking it's going to go back up, but there's no guarantees. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that just me messing up at the end, going from an investor to a trader. There you go. But uh, yeah, maybe me, me, me and Treasure Hunter do got a lot in common. And the reason I say that, I, I don't care about the company, how it runs and how earnings is, mm -hmm. because there's no guarantees. I mean, for an example, going back to GGB, because I was following there for a long time. I, I was in it for a long time. Earnings came out, it beat earnings. Mm -hmm. Why have to stop going down if it beat earnings? Why? It, like, like the company and the stock is completely separate. And it's completely separate. Or well, if you look at a big company like Apple. Apple got a new phone, they sold out, blah, blah, blah. Expected uh, earnings, not earnings, but um, stock prices like 140 150 why is the stock going down to 110? I, I don't know. I mean, for no rhyme or reason, great company, great fundamentals, uh, beat earnings most years, or uh, one year's a day and beat earnings, but the stock still went down. Why? There's no rhyme or reason behind it. So I can't really, really follow, follow fundamentals because the only thing fundamentals tell you if you are a long-term investor, if it's something that you can put your money in, let it sit for a few months and come back, your money's still going to be there. That's true. I mean, but we're trying to make money. I'm saying, so I, I don't really know how to cover leaks. But at the same time, looking at, like, technicals, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm going to fall back from technicals myself and just go with price. 
And, uh, and what I mean by that, looking at the moving average, max CD, all these technical analysis people set up, all these lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines. I mean, and I'm thinking to myself, what do these lines really mean? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they give you a guide, they give you an indication, but they don't tell you why the price goes up and down. They don't tell you exactly when you should buy in. But by, by the time those lines cross, you could be two or three days late. You could be late. And then as soon as you go in and um, say say the stock is above the 50, the 50 um, average, whatever you want to call that, you get in and now the stock drops. All my, all my technicals told me to buy, and I buy, and the stock drops. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's- that's that's just how it is I'll sometimes, say. man. Yeah, you know, because the technicals, you the tech, yeah, I mean, the technicals don't predict. You know, they can't predict the near future. Sometimes they, you know, because they, you know, technicals use, you know, they go back and they they, they do use historical data. Actually, I mean, and and you know, yeah. it's yeah. exactly, exactly. They cannot predict the future, so. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at the stock, and this is something I, I didn't get into. I'm, I'm just looking, and, and it was a stock that went up 20% the other day. I think it was one that you gave on, on the thing. I wrote it down, put it on my watch list. I said, let me just see what happened with this stock. Mm-hmm. Some of them went down, some went up. But one went up like 20%. And I'm like, why did this go up 20%? The fundamentals didn't tell me it was going to go up 20%. I'm looking at like all these moving averages and all that. It didn't tell me it was going to move up 20%. No, I couldn't predict it. But however, when it did go up twenty percent, now all of a sudden the Mac out the Mac lines and everything is going way up, blah blah blah, but I couldn't predict it. Mm-hmm. So it's like one thing to myself, man, what's the point in these, these lines? I, I don't get the point in these lines. They're not telling me what I want to know. I mean they give me they give me a good guy. Fundamentals give me a guy, but I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. So I'm like, I'm, 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 I, I don't recommend y'all giving up these lines and fundamentals because sometimes it helps you be sure because afraid money don't make money and you just want that, that back up. So I even, I even still use them myself, but I kind of only use one. I either only use a Mac, C, Mac CD or MACD, or you want to call it, or I just use a, uh, a moving average. I don't use all of them. Cause I, don't, I don't see the point. That's true. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But, man, that's about two cents on it. I mean, just being, just being a more, of, more of a disciplined trader, everybody should be more of a disciplined trader. So you get in something that hits uh, resistance, and it crosses resistance. I don't care what stock it is. It could be any damn stock. If it crosses resistance, you can buy into it, uh, buy 200, 300, 400 shares, whatever you want to buy. And if it goes up, good. If it goes down, just admit that you're wrong. Have your stock got... Your uh, stop loss set and just get out of the trade. Mm-hmm. So if you lose twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, whatever, you, you was wrong, and you have to admit to the market that you was wrong. Mm-hmm. And and that's what I mean by by staying disciplined. Or if you go to support, you want to go to the support, and you're like, all right, cool, it's a good level. You start to set your stop loss, and then it goes up, cool, you in the uh, the funnel. But if it goes down, it means that you're wrong. You get out of the trade. So, so for everybody getting on, I guess it was Bond that made it, man. It wasn't Bond that made that pick. Yeah, that everybody lost that money you on? Yeah, that's the yeah, man. Bond. Now, now the reason that I don't, I don't blame I don't blame Bond for that. I didn't get in had no skin in the game. But the reason that I don't blame him is because look, he can't predict the future. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this is training here. You know, you got to get in at your own risk. Now, a lot of us just won't be disciplined and in a trade. Now, you were disciplined in the trade. It's like, all right, you got it in. Set your stop loss. If it don't work out, you out. Get up out of there. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if it was like something that happened overnight where you couldn't get in, get out. You were just stuck. Man, that's, that's just unfortunate. That's just a part of the game. Mm-hmm. But it was something where, like, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and the stock all of a sudden crashed. You got your stop loss out. Then, yes, you lost $100, but you ain't really losing a lot. And that's just part of the game. So, I mean, that, that's what I mean by being disciplined. Um, I'm not disciplined in a lot of trades. That's why I took a couple of weeks off. 
So I, I don't blame him for it. I, I, I mean, I got love for him trying to get his money, trying to get, get a good trade. Shit. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. You know we saying? all do. We I'm all do. appreciate it, man. Thank I'm you so much for the call, yeah. LK Rock. Yeah, nah, nah, I'm, I'm kind of long winded because I'm driving this shit. <laughs> nah, nah, go ahead. Don't uh, worry, I, I, I mean, I really appreciate you for the call, man. Yeah, no doubt. Now I'm gonna let y'all go, man. I'm about to. Uh... <laughs> I can't tell you what I'm about to do right now, but so I'm driving. I'm just gonna listen to the rest of the show, man. What you about to do, man? What? <laughs> I, I, I heard you talk. Like, what, what you about to do, though? Hey, no, man. <laughs> All right, I'm about man. to smoke. All right. No, that's, that's all good, baby. I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'm about to smoke, man. Shit. I hear you. I hear you. All right. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, LK Rob. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I don't have nothing against weed, but, man, you, you, I mean, you, 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 I mean, we live in a, in, a, you know, in a kind of country that, you know what I'm saying, when, when, when you, a certain complexion, and you, you start, you know, boasting about it, they, they come find you. You know, we can't get them on these stocks. But, hey, we, you know, we get them on possession. <laughs> Mr. Lloyd, you're on the air. Oh, man, I had to go watch a movie, man. You know what? I, You know what I was just thinking about, man? I, I was just doing some reflecting, man. And since it's Friday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach a little bit. And you ain't going to push me off this damn show, man. I'm going to get my point across. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to be, uh, back when I was in high school, man, I used to be like this chess master, you know what I'm saying? I really took the time to like learn and study, you know, the the the, the books as far as chess. I mean, it, it got so bad, my parents kicked me out of the house because I played so much. I quit cutting the grass, you know, and and I mean, I really busted my ass, man, you know, and I, I became rated. I was rated like 1,800. But you know, the time that I, the years that I had spent learning chess, mm-hmm. And my mom was just like, you know what? If you ain't gonna become a millionaire, why are you, why are you taking it so seriously? And then, and I and I thought about it. I was like, you know what? You absolutely right. But the time and you guys that are probably in your twenties, nineteen, maybe even fifteen, the, the 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 luxury that you have now, especially when you're at home and you don't have to worry about mm, no having a bills, job, no bills, nothing, just no bills, no all, nothing, all, and all the money you get just goes into video games and dumb shit. Exactly, mm. and and I wish I had to, I wish I had put as much energy as I did in chess into stocks. Mm. Um, and I think growing up, you know, you become a little intimidated because yeah. you see like a little line graph, you know, like oh my gosh, that mm. looks so difficult. Let me just uh, give my money to Edward Jones, and I need to hold yeah. for twenty years. And yeah. that was the biggest mistake I ever did, man. And, you know, now that I look at it, but it, it's. it's as you get older, it's, it's more of a struggle because I come home, you know, because you got to spend a couple hours with the wife, and then you got to try to get a couple hours of studying in, and next thing, the next day is trading. So you're really not having a, a lot of time um, to do this. And I took 30 days off from work, man. And in that 30 days, I mean, hell, it was like six hours a day. And, and the, thing of it, the thing of it is, I got a lot of information out of that, but hell, I need a lot more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you guys that are young out there, man, uh, who's out there at 17? Recon Force, let me yeah. tell you, man, you you have a luxury right now. Yeah. And if you really take the time, like you study your your physics or whatever yeah. you did in school, man, you it's a blessing, man, because you, you have an advantage. Your mind is young, and you yeah. can think quicker. Hell, me day trading, I remember when... When uh, was about three weeks ago, SKLN came up, mm. and 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 I day traded. Let me tell you, my hand was shaking so damn bad, man. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I couldn't concentrate. And, and, and not you know? only that, Mister Lloyd, is that at, at your age too, you also have li- you you got real responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? Real bills right. that are coming up that you can't use that money to go and and, and really you know trade maybe like you want to. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, so you know, I'm a little conscientious about about how I how I trade and stuff now. But man, if I was 17, I've been young and reckless and been okay with it because I'm under my mama's roof, you know, yeah. in the basement. <laughs> I hear you. And some of you older guys in the basement, man, don't, don't be offended, man. I I ain't laughing at you, know. We all been there. True. Anyways, man, how, how's that chicken in this week? Was it pretty good? 
Yeah, man, it was all right. I mean, the chicken was pretty good. You know, Bojangles always, you know, do it like they do it. I only do it once a week, man. I can't do junk food like that. Man, you're going to six-pack. Nah, man, I'm, I'm good on this junk food. I don't even really eat out like that, man. I, You know what I'm saying? That's why I always keep a woman in the house with me. They they can cook for me, you know what I'm saying? So. Right. Oh, yeah. you know, you ain't, man, you know? let me tell you. I, having a good woman that can cook in the house, yes. that's, that's Whew. Yes, man. These southern women, whoo, man. These women down in the south, man. They they put it together, man. They put it together. Who asked me how old I was? Uh, thirty four, man. Thirty four. Yeah. And shit, I feel like I'm. You know, after you, you know, remember, you know, in the navy, on your hands and knees, man. I got bad knees now, so I feel like I'm about fifty five. So, yeah, man, it was a good Friday night. I, I took a couple good, of weeks off calling the show, you know, talking about the SDOCQ got my ass up like I just drank a fucking a bottle of coffee. I mean, but look, INNV is moving, so, I mean, look, you know, it, it can put a smile on your face. I mean, uh, we'll see what that does next uh, week. And uh, Yeah, you know what, and here it is, man, let me... I really wanted I'll, to get to 60 for you, man, because, Mr. Lloyd, I want you to get that that 5G's back, man. This is one uh, thing... You know what? You know it's gonna piss me off if it goes to sixty and, and I pull that shit out. I have to wait oh, three days yeah, to get my money. A, yeah, it goes to a dollar or some shit. Yeah, or, like or go up to four dollars, and next <laughs> thing you know, you put a you put on your uh, the front page, ladies and gentlemen, Lord, yes. Miss Lloyd. I don't know if you got out of that sixty cents, but right now that stock is at four fifty. Yeah. <laughs> it will it will be my luck, man. It right. will be my luck, right. and I'm, I'm gonna be like, I have five grand in my hand, but I could have had fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Yep. So, I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, shit. Have you ever woke up to like ten grand in the bank before? No, I mean, no, not not off just a. Well, I mean, unless it was a stock I was promoting, but not off just a, a trade. You know, hell no, hell no. You know, I mean, some, I can't imagine what that some, feels like. Some, man. some stocks. I mean, you can you start pushing. You can you know these OTC plays. You know, you can just you know like okay, if I put this out here, it's gonna blow. Like you can just know it. Right. Just the way you know the, the way it's set up, the volume right. that could come in, the amount of float that is out there, the fact that it's cheap enough where everybody can participate, you just know it's about to hit. Right. And and, and, and ten thousand dollars is definitely a possibility. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that I I'm been kind of attracted to, man, is those those sub penny places. I know, and you gotta and play I'm them, in the man, play them. Look, I got I. I like I didn't want to tell anybody this, but I'm working. We're, we're, I'm working with this Indian guy right now on my, on my site. But I got a good sub penny play coming for y'all, man. It's it's it is good. It's gonna move, and I'm I'm I'm. It's, it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good. But the, the, the problem, I guess, was in what I don't understand about this. Let's say that I buy three or four million shares, yeah. and it goes up. Let's say I'm up three thousand percent. Yeah. Now, do you just put a buy order or sell order in for three million shares and, and not scare everybody, or you just put a million, you know, sell a million? And I mean, what 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 yeah, block? Yeah, do you I mean, sell in? sure, you can sell it. I mean, by then, if you know, we're at three. If we're up three thousand percent by then, the volume can cover that trade. You see what right. I'm saying? That's why you know I you know what you know one of the things too that that the show I think works good is that we I can promote from the show because look in the show I have what 60 70 80 sometimes people but guess what if we get in here we we, we get the knowledge here by the time everybody else finds out about it the hundreds the thousands millions of other people who see it they they're the ones who will buy our shares you see what I'm saying so uh, you know when people talk about hey man oh you're gonna look I'm hooking you guys up you guys hear it here first so that everybody else comes after you. I have a video how to make twenty five thousand a month. Promote, you know, when you're buying these these sub. If we get in now, all of us in here, everybody else who finds out about it afterwards buys our shares. They right. they 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 pump us up. So right. Uh, and uh, and uh, Mario, man, as far as why do it sound like I want to be rich overnight? Who doesn't? Yeah. That's just common sense. Who don't want to be rich overnight? I mean, yeah. shit, that's everybody's dream. And if that ain't your dream, then I don't know what the hell kind of dream you're having because I would like to wake up and see yes. $40,000, $50,000 off a $500 bet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, shit, that's, that's, that's 
I, I mean, hell, if you got a shitty job, you you come up with big dreams, man. So I don't know what you do for a living, or but I got a shitty ass job. So I wake up every morning hoping that something hits, mm -hmm. so I can be sitting on the fucking side and 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 resting, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I mean, hell, I mean, do you wake up in the morning hoping that you? Well, you're already sitting at home, so yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, but of course, I mean, we all all would love to be. A hundred millionaires, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, man, definitely, definitely. So, right, right. But yeah, man, good show today, man. You know, I, I had to get some shit off my chest, but yeah, I'm feeling good, man. I, I'm, I'm glad that this number show 57, man. Shit, yeah. you have to start paying me a pension on this motherfucker. You I know, know right? I mean, 57, right. damn, halfway right, to right. 100, man. The shit, right, right. I, I, Give me, I need this. a 401. Hey, me and Bob need a 401k for this shit, man. I, you better start. <laughs> yeah, I need to start chipping off. That's what people's asking me. Like, I, you know, I need to start asking for some donations. I've been going so hard right. with this, so we'll see. Right, right. We'll see. All right, man. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a go uh, watch a movie before I get a divorce and and be on fucking Jerry Springer on Monday and shit. Come <laughs> on, you're not the father. So um, I'll catch you next week. All right, thanks for the call. Cool man. Thanks. Bye bye. There you go, Mr. Lloyd. Thank you so much for the call, Mr. Lloyd. Thank you so much for the call. You know, Mr. Lloyd gets the kids cheer. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, before he called up, before he called up, we were talking about Birdman. And, you know, hood dudes like Birdman, you can say what you want about them. Them dudes get money. You can say what you want about some of these dudes in the hood, okay? You don't like the way they dress. You don't like the way they look. You don't like the way they walk. 